Okay. Uh, since it's six thirty, well, I will go ahead and call the the uh, August sixth meeting of the select board to order, and we will start with the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. And since we're all here, we have established a quorum. We are ready to rock and roll. Um, so uh, I move to open the meeting. Stand. Okay. Um, we'll start with public comment. Is there anyone uh, that would like to make um uh, bring before the board a public comment that is not on the agenda, understanding that we will um, very uh, most likely not do anything on it tonight, but it is to bring to our attention so we can uh, address at a later time. Okay. Sarah, um, you want to identify yourself for the recording? My name is Sarah Langett and um, I'm currently one of the two uh, school board members uh, called Belgrade. And uh, we, um, I particularly have been faced with a, a rare opportunity to uh, uh, speak in a one-on-one uh, -on -one meeting with the administration of the ICU about budget and um, uh, concerns and items for improvement from next year. Um, this kind of items have been kind of tabled around last two years, specifically last year, uh, at least in 10, 10 items that were specifically tied up. There was, uh, obviously there was improvement in them. They were, they were fixed um, uh, to, the, to the best of the budget. So, I had sent an email to each one of you through Gmail, uh, kind of in a confidential mode, but basically um, in that email, what I said, if we had taken analysis of Article 1 of the 11 articles of the budget that we already passed and is rolling for next year, I comment about the evident show of uh, items that when you lump them up, there's definitely underestimated as compared to the actuals. And there's a set of items that are definitely overestimated as compared to the actuals. So that said, with that article, when it's analyzed on items that were over 20% increase or were under 20% uh, percent that they were underestimated for next year uh, compared to the actual, so the previous year, we're talking about half a million dollars, the ones that were underestimated, half a million, uh, quarter, I'm sorry, quarter of a million dollars, and we're at, the, the IRC was all, only asking 100. So it's 250,000 that were actuals, versus being asked 100. So that we already have a deficit going into that in next year, just on that. However, when, when we look at the overestimated stuff, when we look at those items, we're talking about actuals of about, again, a quarter of a million to 50,000, but 600,000 are asked. So we already, when we merge both sides, we're winning with extra one. And depending on how that look at, that's the money, the budget that we approve. And a lot of people in town don't understand that. The budget that is approved is the money that our taxpayers are going to send to the RCO ahead of the year. All right. So we already overpaid. 
or you can say the administration is overcharging the tax. And that's that's a serious thing for me. Anyways, I know that we're talking about 3,000 items in this budget. It's a lot to look at. Mm -hmm. And um, um, it's a lot of energy into it. But that's what we signed for, the school board. If we're not willing to go item through item, then we're not doing our job. So that's all I want to bring forward to you. We have not set it a time for the meeting. There are a lot of synergy going on about taxes in this town. We are a very fiscal conscientious town. I don't have to speak about that. And I know there's a citizen initiative to look out at a certain portion of the population for certain criteria to help them with their taxes. Well, 75% of our taxes would also be our city. So uh, there are other areas that we need to start tidying up. And I think this one already is, is one that, is one that okay. definitely is in black and white. Okay. So uh, I want to uh, offer that to the board. And I would like to hear what dates uh, you guys will be available and uh, how many. I don't think we need a full form there uh, for this meeting. And, and probably one rep from the board or two. I don't know. You guys decide that. And then <clears throat> the other portion of the public comment that I had to make tonight is relating. Uh, we already, I want to conclude the one for the school board. And then I want to start one for the planning board. Uh, we, the planning board last week introduced a very minute uh, change to the shoreline zone ordinance. It's mostly a, a language, uh, one sentence language update. So we can uh, put ourselves in line with the state law regarding uh, the handling of, of one cubic uh, meter of uh, dirt over the handling of, of that in a, in a uh, uh, location that is close to the lake when it's one, over one cubic meter uh, of dirt that we need a contractor, certified contractor to do that. So that was not quite explicit in the ordinance. So we had a language to fix that, the, board, the whole board passed unanimously. So I, cons I consult with the clerk and Currently, there's no items for the our local ballot, so maybe we're gonna kick this that uh, change to March. <clears throat> the change is not overly significant, so but I thought I I let it to be out, out there because I'll be able to put everything in writing for your next meeting. So probably I'll be let in the next meeting. Just a heads up. So, okay, this should be on your number. We told the taxpayers in life when we do this. That's the most universal. We should have a local map. Okay, we'll see. All right. So thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, sir. That was that, that was under five minutes. That was, well, I, that was we did not call nine. We did not call nine one one because I think she exceeded three minutes. So we were safe. <laughs> uh is there anyone else that has any comments for under public comment? Okay, I would just like to um, again give uh, give good words where where people have done things. I would just like to note that the Belgrade Regional Business Group did an outstanding job with their first Loon Festival this prior weekend, and that was that was a a work of the Belgrade Regional Business Group. Uh, the Belgrade Rec Center did, um, I didn't go, but I heard that what they did on the park with the kids was just outstanding and would like to give credit for that. And then also for the fire department for their bean hole dinner. So getting all of that together. And lastly, the loon calling, they had 125 people or something lined up uh, watching the loon calling. It was really amazing there were that many. So it was just a really good time that was done and would like to give credit to to the uh, parties that put that together on behalf of the town. So, if there's nothing else, okay. Um, I move next, I move that we approve the minutes of July 16th, 2024. Second. Any discussion on the minutes that anyone has? 
No edits to suggest. Okay. All right. Um, we'll go ahead and vote. All in favor. Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dan? Yes. I'll vote yes, so we will approve the minutes. Okay. The next item uh, under unfinished business. Um, I move we open a discussion of the Dalton properties. Yes. Okay. So, Lorna, do you want to start us? Um, um, yes. So, you each have a binder. Um, before Nick left, he pulled a lot of financial data uh, for you, broken down uh, by year. Um, and so you have that also included in your binder are annual uh, inspection. And then we also have two inspections from our insurance. Uh, one that is current just came in within the last week and then one from 2017 that they sent me. Um, they were not able to go into each Dalton because of mold. Uh, that is why he sent me what he had from 2017. Um, I also included information on what we have for eight Dalton, which would be estimate on mold remediation. Um, estimate for uh, plumbing, heating uh, fixes, and then an estimate for attic insulation, removal, and installation. Uh, I know Corey's here. He's been waiting for a contractor to give him an estimate on costs to fix inside. Um, and I know you tried them several times today, but they have not responded just yet. Oh, but he probably. did but he did have someone um, who was willing to give uh, some pricing. So there are several things in your binder. I think I sent the financials out to you. I looked, it was March, late March. Um, that those were originally provided to you. Now you have a, a hard copy. Um, so you had wanted to take a look at things, see where we were, and maybe work on coming to some sort of a decision for maybe town meeting, unless you wanted to do it sooner. I'm thinking town meetings uh, next year to put something to voters, either to uh, raise funding to fix or... Okay. Well, thank you for putting this together. I mean, there's a huge amount of information. And I'll be really honest that I have not read all of the pages. By the time I got it, I did not, I had not read all through it. So um, um so um I think I'm certainly not ready to make a decision tonight. I also um uh, Melanie had asked for some additional information. Good, oh, I'm sorry. Good good questions. Uh so I was able to get that. Um, the original warrant article, the minutes from the meeting 2012, um, the historical uh, society was able to provide me with the newsletter from March of 2012, which gave some information. I found it interesting. Um, town manager at that time indicated that the plan was both of those properties with the rental income would pay pay for themselves within two years. And then uh, the Historical Society was also able to pull um, a newspaper article that was a follow-up from town meeting in March of 2012. So thank you to our Historical Society for being able to help with that. Was it two years or 10 years? Well, she's like two years ago. We would have been really doing well because I think we paid 138 for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, part of that was also the waterfront. 
It does say okay. 10, Melanie. Okay. Yeah, if I you look at it, it, it <laughs> I, that's my error. That's if okay. If I was you like, look at, that long? Yep, no, you're right. absolutely right. If you look at this one with the yellow on the top, look at page two and the second paragraph, it says discussion. Look at the very end okay. of that paragraph. Okay. That's what yeah. I thought. Yeah, well, I was yeah. supposed yeah. to be yeah. like yeah. 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 mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone have any comments? I have a, I have a question. Mm -hmm. the, um, the report that we received from our insurance people from 2017 that yes. listed a lot of things that needed to be done. Is there any sort of tracking this might be from Bruce and from Corey as far as what has been completed? Because I'm sure a lot of that on the list from 2017 has been taken care of at this point. I've never looked at the 2017 report. Yeah, I, mean, I know at one point the, the roof was mentioned, and that that has been fixed. So the chimney, the chimney's been fixed. The back fence was there. And that's about it. Okay. I'd have to look at your report. I haven't had I haven't had a chance to. Yeah, they just he yeah. just sent that to me, but I'll make a copy and I'll email this to both of you. Okay. okay. I think I'll make that would be helpful rather back. than Absolutely. You know, looking at this old list and you know, are having to wonder agree what's on that that we still need yeah. to be done. The initial cost that I got for some of the work from the contractors, because I've been bugging him since the day he was there, um, was forty thousand dollars. And that's just him getting started on the interior stuff. I don't know what he's done. I left it up to him and I said, well, I'm not going in. You go in and you look at what you got to look at. You tell me what you're seeing with a different set of eyes than what I'm seeing. So that's what I've got so far from him is just, and he supposedly has it working on getting all in writing. As soon as I get it, you guys can get it. And that would be the mold remediation is one cost. This is another cost. This is a total, whatever needs to be done on the right. inside. Yeah. And then we have another cost. From uh, um, plumbing and heating systems. Yeah, yeah so definitely okay. no heating systems going on in the water. No. So I noticed on the wall that we're going to look at a little bit later, there was 550 for a sump pump for that building. And then Corey and I had a chance to speak the other day. And there's no dehumidifier running in there currently. No, they won't. And how long has it been? Because my fear was that. Of course, with all the humidity we've had, we didn't have a dehumidifier running, which is just giving that mold oh, everything well. it needs to go. Right, that was my question. So it, how long has it been it, since we've Since had the it? last time it flooded, it flooded, well, April, March, probably. So the building's just been closed up since then? Yeah. yeah. And nobody's been inside? No. I haven't been inside since... You can't go in unless you have April, and here and, and, yeah. and yeah. Here. April or March is the last time I was in there. Special news. March. Special news. Yeah. But it hasn't gotten any better on its own. Uh, no. We've already dumped the back box before we bought it, paid for it, by, or paid for it, already dumped to it. And now well, we're yeah. probably dumped it. No. Maybe triple it. I bet we're not looking for anything less than $150,000, $160,000. Easy. Yeah. And that's just Dalton 8. That's not even. Talking about Dalton 10. Okay. So the last picture of the humidifier was December 19th of 2023, and it's a foot underwater at that point. So at least has not run such so. Right. Um, I'm over here. I'm like, well, I'm waiting for you to pipe out, hon. <laughs> She's like, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little hesitant after hearing all of this. Um, I I just wanted to add, as you're thinking about Dalton and and what we might do with it or not do with it, if you thought about keeping it, um, I wondered if it might be an opportunity for the historical society to work with the town again, similar to what we did with the Old Town Meeting House, not on the things we're talking about here, but after the mold was remediated and that type of stuff um, for the Historical Society to consider maybe um, doing the interior um, and, and having a place that the Historical Society could live 
outside of the center for all seasons, which would also give some space back to the center for all seasons that they could certainly use as well. Now, I have not discussed this with my board or anything, but <laughs> I just kind of wanted to talk. We, we desperately need some place to live. Um, and so it, this just came up as a topic. I'm, a, I'm very concerned about the, the water damage though and, and the water in the cellar because we do need to be able to pretty well climate control um, the, any place that we're in. So, um, you know, there would have to be obviously a lot of investigating and more information and so forth, but I had mentioned it to Melanie the other day when we were doing a tour. Since then, I've heard some other things. I'm like, I don't know if I want to say this, but... Uh, Corey? Switching hats as a town taxpayer on two different properties. I do not want any of my tax day dollars going into that problem child anymore. Now, I know it's your decision, but this is a taxpayer. That is nothing but a money pit that is not worth anything. Well, I believe I'm correct that we will need to go back to the town. Uh, one, if we want to fix it for money and back to the town for a vote, if we want to take it down. Am I correct? Yes. In As if that will be a, a town decision. Yes, yes, just as it was right. to purchase. Right? Right. I mean, that's that's what my what I'm thinking. I may be wrong. Well, I think the other side of what we need is <clears throat> we dump a lot of money into that roof, and uh, <clears throat> um, so if we're going to demo that building, what is the cost going to be for demolition, removing a lot of debris, all of those things? Right. Like we need to be able to look at them side by side, mm -hmm. and so Absolutely. whether or not. You know, because this building does have some historical significance in the town of Belgrade. The Daltons were active supporters of the center for all seasons. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Dalton used to hold the keys to the center and she would let folks in and out who did rentals. Um, you know, Noah was there a lot participating. She was always there participating. So there was some history there and some nostalgia. So I guess my my take on it is I'm sad that we let it get to this point. And if there's a way that we could get it back and it could be utilized for something else in the town, I would support that as long as the cost is not exponentially greater mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. not saving it. Yeah. And, and I just Mary? want to note that there has been some interest in the past. Um, one was, I think, Sale Main in purchasing that building from the town of Belgrade to run their programming out of. Um, so that was two, three, four years ago, but they were very interested and um, they were turned down. So I think that there's some interest, potentially some people that have some money that may be interested in the building. I would just hate to see that all of our tax dollars and all of the money that we have put into this building um, and for us to not recoup anything at all is a shame to me as a taxpayer also. It's crunch. But anyway, I just wanted to note that that you know, those opportunities also may be available. Right. Yeah, as far as sale main, they're not running the sailing program anymore. So yeah, you know, okay. perhaps, perhaps, so perhaps I didn't know that. Yeah, so, they may have been interested at the time. They were interested at the first time. They they're wanted. turning it over to the town next summer. Yeah, they wanted to purchase it. Yeah. 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 And Dan is nodding. Sarah has. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Sarah? Can I, can I chime in after Sarah? Yeah, after Sarah, you may. Thank you, Dan. You're so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I'm going to uh, drop the ball, drop the ball and leave, all right? Yeah. So my, my, uh, in the, regarding sale main, I think the Jack Club here in town is trying to renegotiate that with them and bring them back. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe sometime I heard I, I'm not sure. You might be completely right that they're not coming back at all. I think Dan would have more up to date. Yeah, Dan, Dan sure. would know that. All right, you have a meeting Dan. coming up. <laughs> uh, the Jack, the Gary Pond Jack Club. I don't, who cannot hear you? Can you unmute, Dan? Yeah, I, I, I didn't hear what you said. 
So I, I said that I think that the uh, the Golden Pond Jack Club has a a plan to reconnect with uh, Sail Maine. Yeah, so so we're gonna uh, we we have a meeting with Sail Maine set up, I believe, next Tuesday to talk um, just about this kind of transitional phase that Sail Maine is. So this is Sail Maine doesn't want any satellite programs anymore, so we're working with the Belgrade or the Great Pond Yacht Club to take this over with them. Um, so we're working on that, figuring out. We're we're just starting that process. We we've started that process a long time ago, but we're trying to we're in the act of doing it now. So, well, th thank you for the correction because I thought they the negotiation was having to keep them here, but I guess that is just for them helping us the our transition to start our own program. Great. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's one thing. And then if I were I, I if I were you guys, I would consider probably demolish, making a nice flag. Putting all that in all that nice history you have, a plaque that is completely metal that it will not age in two, three hundred years. And then after the demolition, use that space for pickable ports, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that was that was a uh, really good by Sarah. Um, so my my input on the thing is it we have to figure out something to do with it because it's gone unused. And it's falling into even more disrepair every single day that we that it sits there. And it's in my front yard, you know, um, at the rec center. It's you know, we're we're improving that place incrementally. And we got to make up a decision on that place because that's an eyesore and it's an unusable space completely. So, you know, we have to think about that. You know, if we could if we can fix it or if we tear down what the talking about the future costs, comparing the cost of tearing it down versus renovating it and then putting it to town meeting because it's it's just getting worse. So we, we just have to make a move. Um, one, one of the things um, I think we should think about is um, we could get this on the warrant in November. Is that an option, Mary? Yeah. yeah. So we could look at a November vote you could look at a town meeting vote, or you could look at a special meeting. The problem that I see with a November vote is it should be a huge turnout. And how educated are the people that are gonna be voting about what the situation is? Um, the prob one problem, one concern with a town meeting vote is you have 110 or 20 people because I think you'd want it on the floor so it could be discussed. So there's a concern. And then the other one is if you have a special meeting, how many people can we get there? Can we get three or 400 people there to give us some sample of what we want? So I think that's another part of the discussion we need to be thinking about. And what's a deadline for November, Mary? Well, we have to have the ballots. Um ready by October 5th. So I would have to have them. There's a public hearing. So the question would have to be ready and the posting, the notice. So um, ideally into September, the last meeting in September would be a deadline drop down. Okay, that's what I want to get, okay. So it's a question of can we get ourselves ready for that? And, and if we can, do we want to? Barbara. Well, and it was purchased by secret ballot in 2012. If you look at what we've received, it was purchased. It, it was a secret ballot. Okay. Uh, so I don't know if it would be. Huh? It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be, but it could also be a secret secret ballot, which would in March, which oh, would, in March, which in March, pick, which which would would pick up more voters. If you're looking for more voters. Well, I'm looking for people to know Educated what they're voting voters. on. Right. I understand the extent of what they're voting on. Can I say something? Uh, yeah. Isn't that your job to educate the people? Wouldn't you, if if you wanted it on the ballot, wouldn't you somehow educate the people what they're voting on? It's a question of how how effective can how can we do that effectively so we get enough people? But yes, social media, but, you know, the newsletters, mm -hmm. you know. Do we have a new, we have a newsletter before November voting? 
Yes, we should. We should. should. When does that one come out? It should be yeah. September. Yeah. So I think it is September. The, does it usually it come September. in September? It's usually four. If there's a an election in November, it should be for that year. It's normally yeah, yeah. three unless it's an election year. So that would be another piece. It's just to me, there's a lot of pieces here that we'll try to put together fairly so quickly. I, I think it's really difficult this day and age to get people out to vote. I think your largest participation is actually going to be the November right. election. You know, because I look at you know our June eleventh election and I'm just like this is a poor turnout. I have mm -hmm. twenty nine hundred over twenty nine hundred voters. I had about three hundred people come out for some of the biggest things that our taxpayers are paying for. Right. Number one, the school budget. That's I, I just could not believe it. I was just totally dumbfounded that we didn't get more people out just knowing that that increase was over five hundred thousand dollars to the taxpayers. So I think, you know, it, it's hit or miss. <laughs> I think your largest participation is actually going to be November. You're going to have a huge number of people out because of the presidential election. Right. All right. But how are those people, are they going to focus on this question? No. They're going to be focused on the presidential election. Um, and no matter how much information you put out there, I don't think you're going to get any more dedicated people to vote for that question. Now you may get people to vote for it, but they're going to be voting on it not based on having studied the information. Right. Um and with the presidential election, I just I I don't want to put it off either. I want a decision, but I just don't know. November kind of makes me a little nervous about that. But... Can we get a dehumidifier in the building and start start stopping what we're allowing to happen. I'm sure we can. Do we have, I think you and I talked about that because generally with a dehumidifier, you can attach a hose to the back and as long as the- Even if we put it upstairs, it will still work. I mean, it won't work as well, Right. but it would definitely still work. Yeah, because it'll be hard in that basement because you just have the casement windows, but if it was on the first floor, you just have to have something so that the hose runs outside and at a downward angle, but then it would consistently pick up and dump. So you're not having to go in and dump it twice a day. You put it, you put it on the counter and dump it in the kitchen. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if there's a way that we can do that, because I mean, for no, eight we months, we just, just it? Yeah, we it yeah, right. Yeah. right. Bruce yeah. will do it. I'll buy him. Bruce said he'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I work in multi buildings all the time, so it doesn't bother me. It doesn't affect me. Make sure you wear a mask. That is where I had 95 or something. Okay. And then the other thing I'm thinking of is um, if there's any thought process that we may keep it, that we may want to look at a heat pump installation instead of a little burning furnace because then you can climate control. So if it were to be something that was usable when it's done, so maybe we look at that cost too, we're not just replacing, I think it's $8,000 to replace the oil tank. And if we want to move the climate control rule, Source for insurance purposes, you still have to have another source of heat. Well, you have to have a backup source. Yeah. 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 Barbara. Um, can we, before we talk about this again, can we get an estimate on demolition, the cost of demolition? I'm talking to Kenny right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kenny's going to demo it? No, he can give us the can cost for getting a roll off dumpsters from our. With track the, guys, and I'll talk to Jason about the tear down portion of it. And what that can we salvage the roof? Yeah, no. No. no, could we salvage the roof to get any money just for the cost of the metal in the roof? No, it's all no, metal up there. Oh, it is. Not, oh, I thought we put a metal. Roof. Well, we had half a metal roof up there. Oh, okay, yeah. and now it's in Dalton 10 waiting to be reused. Okay, uh -huh. Bruce. Just give you guys a heads up. Uh, the um, mine property it's about fifteen thousand dollars for a tear down disposal of the house. Oh, oh, so wow. that's about comparable. Yeah, just that's just the house, the house setting down the outbuildings. Yeah. Okay. That's, that was a rough price to pay. Kind of gave less. Okay. okay. Well, that's good information. That's... Okay. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. If we're even thinking about this and turn it over to the historical society. 
Another price I'd like to see is basically get the hold of a company like that, TC Afford, that does basement, that, basementing. That's, <laughs> that seals up the basements and stuff. Yeah. Basically stripping the thing out and then re insulating it and putting in the heat pump. And at that point, turning it over to historical society and let them do what they raise money and do what they did up here. Mm -hmm. You know, let them she rock, let them do what they're going to do, let them design the space the way they need it. But us putting a bare minimum of enough to dry it out and keep it dry to be able to turn it over. So that's the only way I'd want to keep that thing. If not, I just want to thing leveled. So yeah. you got to do something in that basement. If you don't, you don't need right. this boat every spring. Right. So you've got to find a way to seal that basement. Well, when you go back into 2017, the folks who were renting so, it in 17 yeah. were venting the dryer into the basement or instead just, of outside. Yeah. So the flooding, we got to deal with the flooding. We got to find a way to not have a flood. You got to find a perimeter drain and get it dug up and cleaned out. That's a problem. That's a problem. The perimeter drain. I think what happened, I, and me and Gloria think, is that perimeter drain went out with a ditch and where they cut all their trees by the center. Yeah. I think it crushed the crushed the pipe for that perimeter. Because that's the only way. That's the only direction it could have go, gone is that direction. So it probably get crushed. So we would have the cost of that of installing a. We own the sub pump. Uh, I said we own the sub pump already, so you don't have the, the cost of getting installed and piped out. But the problem with pumping it up, we're going to be pumping it up, but it's going to be run, running right back in as fast as we pump it out because the water behind it, between behind Dalton 10 and Dalton 8, there's standing water out there all the time. All the time. Oh, and that. That unused piece of property. Yeah, out behind, towards 27, right? Between yeah. the property and 27. The standing water there all the time. Now, if we can figure out a way to make that actually flow like it's supposed to. Now, I don't know if there used to be a um, culvert across Dalton Lane, and it's just been filled in over the years. I have no idea. Or if there was one the other direction that would lead to that valley that runs down to the lake. I don't know. But there's standing water there all the time. What would happen if we lifted that building just like Sawyer's are doing over here to for Doug's father and just put a slab under it? Just build in the basement and put a slab. I under. spoke to a contractor. He's up to 50s all the time. Integrity. Integrity builders? Yeah. Yes. Spoke to him. He said the only way that he would ever touch this is if you had somebody come in, poured concrete, filled the basement half, a little over half full with sand, slapped it over, sealed the rest of it. That way you're above the water table. You put a drying system underneath it, commercial dehumidifier, and then you gut the inside and you start fresh. That would be the only way he would touch it. And that way, because if you look at the building and some of the pictures, I don't know if you want to post the pictures, but some of the pictures are a light on the wall, like that alarm panel. There's a uh, there's a box behind that. The lights in the bathroom, they're just coming out of the wall. The electrical outlet is full of um, nesting material from right mice. So if they're in the electrical box in the bathroom in two different places, the wires in that wall have been chewed and there's dead rodents in the attic. So what's been chewed up there? He's absolutely correct. It needs to be gutted and then start fresh. If we're going to start fresh or it needs to be leveled. One of the other. I think the rail mold you had to go strip it down to yeah. studs and clean it anyway. Yep. Yeah. Well, like I said, if we can get a price to do something like that and then turn it over to historical society, let us know what it's cost. You know, that might be an option. But I don't think, I personally don't want to put the money into to do a completely remodel of that building mm -hmm. and still be a landlord. It's better paying enough to be a landlord. Yeah. Right, but then the historical society, we have to know how much money they want to put into it. Right, right. Before right. we can make a decision. And, so, yeah, I was going to say, and yeah. we would have to, you know, talk all along right. here and so forth. But the other part about the historical society is we can work with an open building and do it 
as we can money wise that you wouldn't be able to if you were going to rent it out again you'd have to have it finished right. whereas in my head anyway you know i can make my historical society office over in the corner and work on the rest or whatever so but that again i haven't discussed this with anybody but Lord. what for <laughs> she's going rogue yeah. Yeah. um so if if it were come if it were to pass that the historical society would receive this building at some point, are there grant opportunities that would help facilitate the organization to move forward in renovations? There I'm, probably are. Yes. I, when I, I say that, I, I know you don't know of all the grant opportunities, but I'm thinking larger dollar value, mm -hmm. hundred, two hundred, five hundred thousand dollars at a right. time that would allow you to do that because. I only asked that because if that were the case, it might be good for voters to understand that if there was some investment to even get it to a spot where we could turn it over to you, that there would be a path forward. Mm -hmm. um, that may help a voter decide one way or the other. Um, anyways, I just yeah. wanted to ask that. Yeah, I mean, whatever we do, it's going to be an expense number we've got to right. got to, to work through. I mean, I need to really read through all of this. I've skimmed through part of it, and I worked on part of it and be able to be more informed myself when i read through this i, I was i was frightened yeah literally frightened of the condition that it is you yeah know? and uh, so i don't want to just you know cast aside all value in the particular property because i know as you've spoken melanie they were you know, there's a lot of historical value there the, the family contributed and i totally understand that I'm just saying, from my perspective, right now, the condition of this building scares me, really scares me. Uh, Corey? We've been talking all along about Dalton 8. <laughs> Dalton 8, 10 is just as bad. Between the mold, the sewage leakage, the over abundance of material, it's we we've got to address that. Just the the in the MMA report, the stairs need to be rebuilt. The foundation of the stairs need to be rebuilt. The the I don't even know if we should technically go over there with some caution tape and say you're not coming out this door. You know, I don't know. The stairs go like this, so we we need. This isn't just Dalton eight. This is Dalton eight and ten. Yeah. There are and the there's exits out of that, right? There's a side exit. Is there one? There's an exit that comes down into the garage. Into the garage. Hallway by the garage and that doorway up there. Right. Um, are those stairs? He didn't say anything about those. I, okay. I'm assuming they're okay. They're inside, out of the weather. They're, they're inside. They're out, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and another thing, he, he, I know he sent pictures of the rooms. <laughs> that building has no attic access that we could see. And I personally have witnessed two gray squirrels going in the eaves and going up into the attic. So, cause they're not gonna live in the eaves. They're living up in the attic. And yeah. gray squirrels, they'll make a nest like this up there. I've cleaned them out when I worked for Terminex and did the insulation. They, they will make a mess. So that attic, is full of rooms over there as well. And the mechanical room is full of mold. And the mechanical room is full of mold. So it's not just Dalton 8. So maybe if 8 is salvageable, we toss 10. If <laughs> <laughs> 8 is salvageable, we toss 10. We toss 10. Yeah. Just, just throwing it all out there so we're, we're dealing with it all at once. Right. This so can't be a bag the Stormless Society storage, we talked about that. Right. Well, like, but then you have the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a difference though between storing in the garage and storing the house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, so. Well, and yeah, we have we do have that bay pretty full right now. Um, but a lot of that were we to find a permanent home, you know, could be moved out. But um, and if we had to, we'd find it someplace. <laughs> but um yeah, I mean, I think they, they kind of do go together. And, um, you know, from what I've seen uh, as well, um, at times, it seems to be better now. But the yard used to be kind of cluttered and 
so forth there. And, you know, we would probably the historical society would want it decluttered a little bit for people to be coming in and so right, forth. Absolutely. Um, Barbara? Yeah, I guess I would just like to get a sense of what our various options are quickly and what we need to do. For instance, if we need to have this ready to bring to the voters in November, we have to have have it all packaged up by early October, which isn't have enough. Have it packed up by the end of September. Right. Yeah, I mean, it has to be. So I, is, is that even realistic? Yeah. So I don't, I don't even see that trying to put it before the voters in November is an option. Yeah, I don't think it's realistic. Okay, so, sorry. oh, sorry. <laughs> Bad habits. <laughs> I don't want to just keep piling things on, but talking with her, having people of the public come in, we're not going to be able to have public access to that building with the driveway the way it is and the pavement the way it is. The pavement has bumps this high that are in there. The tenant drives over them is it away from them, but if we're going to deal with Dalton 8, we're dealing with the driveway also. Well, which, and which is an equal one way or another, we're factored dealing. in in terms of cost. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and we also then have because one lawsuit over somebody tripping over one of those bumps. Mm -hmm. Well, my other concern is you would then have people driving through recreational property in the summer. You probably have more visitors to a historical site in the summer, and you have summer camp that you're dealing with with traffic management there. So just another piece to work on. The Dalton room is a separate room. They wouldn't be going through the Center for All Seasons property to get to that. No, so I can foresee that we would be expanding wherever pickleball ends up. You would have people utilizing some of the other properties, using part of that property. And therefore, maybe not now, but five years from now. So do we create, we need to think about what we're creating and what we might be creating into the future. But driveways should be maintained regardless. We can't we keep the buildings and don't keep the buildings because you have a building up behind. We need to be able to get to that for fire to fresh up. So that road needs to be kept and main should be maintained even now. You know, we have to get our equipment in there to maintain. You got, you know, be able to get rescue in there. I've got uh I had uh all of construction in today. Melanie, you'll like this. <laughs> They've given me a quote on handicap parking. I have the paving company coming tomorrow for said quotes on the parking areas. Do you want me to have him look at Dalton to just give us a ballpark figure at the same time? I think it would make sense to have the number. Okay, because I'll get the number. When we start trying to figure this out, we shouldn't just be grabbing guesses we should have nope, ball and, and the more we think about it the more stuff that's popping into my head like okay this and like the stairs and you know yeah the rodents and one thing after another yeah i'm not married at all to the historical variety going to dalton like this like you know um, <laughs> so just throwing that out because i've got other ideas <laughs> but um but i did want to bring it up and i would be happy to help or work with anyone you know in getting information together i'll have a board meeting on the 19th of this month and i will bring it up to the board and see what their reaction is i pretty well know what a couple of them are going to be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and But some I'm not sure of. So, mm -hmm. okay, so, okay. What's our, so what's our next action on this? I think our next action is to start to work. Well, do we think it's realistic that we're ready for November? Mm -hmm. oh, do you think we... I, I don't think you're going to get all your estimates at the time. I, I can't get an estimate. <laughs> To save my soul. It's ridiculous. Right. So the recommendation for me as a taxpayer and me on the budget committee is um, maybe try to have the demolition path to the budget committee and repair path to the budget committee. The best ability we can. I don't think, as like Corey saying, I don't think we'll probably have a, any final numbers probably till December. 
Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, exactly. if we're not I under mean, the simple that. stuff I can get, the pavement, and, you know, stuff right. like that, I can get that. And, I mean, I don't even know. If we, I don't think we need that. You know, in my opinion, we don't need to pay that. Just as long as we have a good driver, driver. Yeah, we just did that. I'm not about that. Right. Yes, we could do that to get rid of that rock that's coming up through there. Yeah. Well, okay, so um, not so not November. So we would be looking at town meeting March no, as the first opportunity to make an absolute decision. Next. Unless we chose to do a special meeting. Right. I would I would shoot for March because I think with you're gonna have an ordinance in March mm -hmm. um, that we're supposed to be working on also. I think that's gonna bring more people to that town meeting. Well, because, that's true. Because that's gonna be in my understanding that that ordinance was gonna be on the floor. So it could be explained. So I think if we do it, you know, whatever we do for Norton. So I think that's going to bring a lot more people to the March town meeting. Well, okay, so it'll be incumbent on all of us to encourage people to come. Right. And still say, I don't want to go to town meeting. You do need to come to town meeting. Well, one of the things Corey and I were talking about the other day was how do you get people to the summer to vote? And do you have a shuttle? Do you mm -hmm. say we'll pick you up in North Belgrade at the community center? I mean, a lot of older folks don't that. do a whole lot of driving. So if right. we make it easier for them to get there to vote and participate. That's another thought. Right. Okay, so, so is if we're looking at, excuse me, if we're looking at March, then we would need to have this all wrapped up by January. Correct. So I feel I mean, more comfortable with that as far as a time frame. Yeah. So my thinking, maybe we let Corey continue to work on getting quotes and not, this is the first meeting in August at our first meeting in September, which is 30 days. We come back and see where we're at, what other pieces we need, and if we need to have a larger discussion, but we begin, uh, you will have known whether the historical society is even interested. Yep. Yeah. Because that may be, well, let's forget that idea, or maybe, yes, they're gone ho. And, but it gives us time to get quotes together because we we could fill in the basement. I mean, that's one, right? Fill in the basement or do whatever you needed for integrity builders. Mm -hmm. There's demolish both of them. There's try to fix both of them. But, you know, it gives us time to have some different scenarios to and find out what's missing, because I'm sure you won't have all of them right then. There's just a thought I'm going to you. There's propane there, correct? Yes. So if instead of doing an oil burner as a backup for a heat pump system, if we did we're not a heater, yep. then that would be the backup, and that's three grand. So mm -hmm. there may be a less expensive alternative, and you still have a backup heat source, and then if you have the climate control, you can still... You can still be kind of wrinkly. Mm -hmm. So, so does Spiver or not, you could look for the direct benefit between I do an empire or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so right. 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 Yeah. 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 power, you have still have heat. Yeah, yeah. we have options. So, a yeah. review in 30 days, does that sound like makes sense to folks? Love it. And, um, if something pops up in between that you need our input on, then certainly bring it to the next meeting if there's something there. And we will not try to get this ready for November. We'll try to get this ready for town meeting, okay. which so is so more realistic. September 3rd is our meeting, first meeting in September. Okay. September 3rd. I know for Corey and me, if you guys have questions, if you could email Corey and I, it's stuff that Corey got, got to get answers for, stuff I got to get answers for, it'd be easier if you guys as a board, you know, five board members, you know, swing it to us so we can try to. I think well, we can funnel it through more. Right. More but as long as then you've got too many people. No, but as long as we're getting, you know, Corey right. and I get, you know, Corey yeah. will get the stuff. And then, you know, on the mechanical side of it, I can try to get as many answers as I right. can. And, and we'll need electrical stuff so we can feed it through to, to Dan. Dan and, yep. and uh, Doug. So we'll at least have a conduit for this to go through. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. Okay. It does. Okay. All right. And I wouldn't be moved either to going, I mean, it's been two years since we went over and looked at those properties, and I wouldn't be moved to the board. To go Anytime. To Anytime. So, okay. Even if it's after hours. We may just want to just sort of put our eyeballs on it. And mm -hmm. It's easier to see it than it is in, in photos. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about outside? 
<laughs> we can open the door at Dolphin 8 and you guys can just stand there for a second, I guarantee. Yeah, you can go for that. I don't need so the rest of you can have that experience. I don't need that. You don't I want it. <laughs> okay. So we'll we'll keep reading and coming up with thought and as, and as you know people get ideas as we go through then we'll funnel them through Lorna and and our team and uh, move forward okay thank you very much for groups in advance I know there's a lot of work for the new way just to even know what the scenarios are so thanks for getting it have an idea where we're at yep okay uh new business um, our monthly department committee presentation is Mary Bogle. <laughs> Yay! So, can um, I know these two ladies are waiting for the Cape Town for the North Belgrade <laughs> Center. Oh, before they leave. Oh, you are too? Yes. Okay. Oh. So, um, I don't mind waiting. Okay. So, what's our next one? Um, so, they're, they're last. The heat pump for the North Belgrade. All oh, North Belgrade Community Center. Right. If there's no objection, we'll go ahead with the North Belgrade Community Center. Any objection? No objection. Okay. Thank you. Uh, North Belgrade Community Center. Lorna, would you yes. give us a... Um, so if you've been in the center at all during the summer months, you know that it is like a sauna. Um, and we're getting more and more use, more events, meetings um, in that building. We also have the food pantry um, in there. So uh, Corey has asked for estimates. Um, you have three different companies who have provided similar items, but different manufacturers. And I think Bruce, mm -hmm. um, if I understand correctly, you have done work with one of these people. Yes, um, actually, he does. He does the uh, service on the town office. Okay, so Buzz, and that's the first one, right? Yeah. Buzz Burn. Yeah, Buzz Burn. Um, so you've got all of the estimates uh, there to take a look at. Mm -hmm. We do have enough money oh, I included something. Um, we have enough money in reserve uh, to be able to pay for that. Which was which was the It was the facilities. facilities. The facilities was that in your or or I I added that in. Was you did or, I saw it. Um yeah well we looked at both today. I think there's money in, in facilities. Um whatever yeah. that is Capital, and I think there's there's obviously money available through through the rec. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the facilities. It looks like there's a hundred and eighty. If I read that correctly, yes. If you look under the uh, maintenance garage tab, the very last uh, sheet has uh, reserve accounts listed. And where are we looking? It's the very last page of their the maintenance garage has the, the detail on. So facilities, it looks like 180 uh, recreation. All of that over that has 117. And these are figures from July 23. Just knowing that that building is used so much, it's it's used sort of split between two different groups. I would think we maybe would pull from both of those accounts, not take it all out of one. Half and half. Maybe half and half, half from um, right. the rec center and half from just, that would be my thought, but I don't know how anyone else feels. Well, just because there's a balance there, there's other stuff I'm sure that's slated to come out of them. Because <clears throat> we wouldn't just have a hundred thousand still hanging. Well, this is what we had uh, done for repair of North Belgrade, repair of um, Center for All Seasons. And I, I think we originally started with a hundred thousand last year. We spent 20 on 
various small projects like the roof repairs, uh, repointing into chimneys and stuff like that. That originally came out last year. We did the chimney at the North Calgary. We did both chimneys at uh, Center for All Seasons plus roofing at both. Oh, you fixed a door and the ramp. Yeah, the ramp, 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 ramp it, playground. I don't think it's slated for anything at specific as we go forward with our meeting. By the way, our building meeting, I know this has nothing to do with it, went spectacular with Center for All Seasons. Uh, we had a good tour of everything and it was it was great. It was really good. So, but out of those two two budgets, there's definitely you know, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, anyone have any inclination for Fujitsu over Mitsubishi? I would stick with Mitsubishi. Yes, we have Mitsubishi's here. Yeah. So we yeah. have here and there, you know, the, the I mean, we're not talking of distinct, a huge amount of difference. If there's one that is you've worked with and seems to be performing well. I requested a, a new quote from Wired Up for Mitsubishi, and he never responded. So, okay. I mean, okay. I, if you don't mind, I had a question on that because, um, as a taxpayer, I'm intrigued by the least expensive one. Um, <laughs> but I don't know anything about a Daikin. Uh, yeah, neither does anybody else. And they have an issues with them right now. So maybe that's enough to say. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thanks. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm with the food pantry. Uh, I'm Hazel. I'm the chairperson of the food pantry. Um, so would it have, would it be able to be cool in the main room and the where the pantry is? It's a split. Two separate yeah, units. Two, units. Two, yeah. two units in one version of it, one unit with two heads in another version of it. So each 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 area yeah. they'll have its own climate control. So the food pantry they'll so we would be able to control yeah. it. In yeah, the and air. yeah, in the meeting area would be it on their own. Unless you want the heat on in the main area and cool on the in the back area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it depends on no, no. Well, I mean, you know, we have a lot of volunteers who work at the food pantry. A lot, and I would not, um, you would not expect them to work in. Oh, you know, our people who work for us don't work in those conditions. So we I don't want to discourage volunteers because the conditions are so bad. Well, and, and the other thing is is the heat pump with the humidity and stuff, it's gonna help save that building, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. humidity is getting in there and yeah. you know, we need to pull that humidity out. These heat pumps gonna do that. Yeah. I know it's not my fault, but yeah, bugs, whatever it is, Buzzburn. the Mitsubishi would be my call. I mean. He, he fun, does a yeah. good job. He's quite strong when it comes to cleaning hours, and he yeah. does a good job. Yeah. I thought you were saying I'm one of those volunteers. I am. I am a volunteer at the food pantry, and so is Julianne. And we came here because he told us this was being voted on tonight. And we just want to let you know that it is unbearable working there. And we love serving the community. And I was just there last week and my head was wet. Mm -hmm. So I just yeah. really want you to know. <laughs> I really want you to know how much yeah, how we, much we need this. And that's why we're here tonight to let you know that. And I use it Thursday for crafts for the seniors. And so, we had to cancel because it's so hot. So hot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's my concern is as volunteers and other people doing this, that We've yeah. got to make it, you know, livable. And I think it would help that basement too because of all the moisture down there. And wouldn't hurt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Ooh. as far as yeah. other yeah. other community yeah. use, I've been asking for oh, years because I'm like, you could you could have done a window view. That I've been asking this for a long time for an air conditioning. I have never heard of it. So I'm sorry. And I'm like, that I asked well, turned it down and said no. Well, couldn't put it in the window, couldn't do this. So okay. Uh Barbara. Barbara. Okay. Well, anyway, the McGraw Pond Salmon Lake Association had the meeting there last night because of the weather. And we had the we reserved the building because as a backup. And luckily it rained and it was cool because the last time we had our meeting in there, it was sweltering. Yeah. So and the other thing, it's a it's a rental. 
more people will rent that place. That's right. That's what and I was going to say. How can anybody rent that in the or rent it in the summer? They really? die in there. Right. Exactly. You know? exactly. So it would help. We brought we brought a couple extra out that it's right. it's a you know it's got AC. I'm right. sure. We brought a couple of extra fans. Yeah, we right. brought a couple of extra fans. Yeah, and okay. those fans do not work. Yeah, they don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool enough last night. These Mitsubishi units, can they do they have an app where they can control by phone? That I believe the new ones do. Yeah. I want to make sure we put one in, we do, and it's on your phone because if those things get left on or get cranked up or cranked down, yeah. I, I want you to be able to look at them or have it some kind of Maybe an alliance. I honestly think through. the Mitsubishi one did mention. We yes. just saw them. Yeah, it has an app. Yeah, yeah. And I'm afraid that if, if we put them in, and it turns them on, it would be. Yeah, well, it, is a, it is a separate charge for the, uh, the Wi Fi yeah. controller. Oh, yeah, and we, but we may want to do what? Just because, again, it's a rental unit. Mm -hmm. You rent it to somebody and they decide they wanted it 32 degrees in there. You know, we may be able to look at it and go, no. <laughs> well, and the, I do know that the lights that we're looking at for a different project have Verizon nodes, and it's about five hundred bucks a piece for the node. Yeah. So I'm sure it's a little bit of an upcharge, but yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. the, the, the new app they have for the distribution is yeah. real. So if we vote on this tonight, wherever we select, how quickly can it get done? I'm not. Mm -hmm. I know the. Uh, such many heat pumps gave me a two week turnaround. Man. I'm not sure about uh, anybody else. Nobody else gave me. I'm, I'm sure if you gave Jeremy, let Jeremy know that it was kind of a rush. He probably, I'm thinking he probably is. Well, he's coming here either this Wednesday or next Wednesday. Okay, okay. Sure okay. okay. so I move that we approve uh, the Mitsubishi heat pumps through Buzzburn um, to be installed at the North Belgrade Community Center. Second. Well, the money is with the money being split between those two accounts. With the money being split, taken out of those two capital accounts. And so Buzzburn rather than Central Maine, even though Central Maine is cheaper. Uh, uh, Buzzburn is the one who does these, correct? Yeah, they have the, okay. Well, they're, okay. They're already established. Okay. They, they, okay. Do, they do a really good job. Okay. Yeah. They're pretty that. attentive. Okay. okay. So, with all that Any more sense. discussion? Did, did somebody second it? Uh, yes. Thank you, Patrick. So Thank you. We did it for charge. Make sure they're you controlled. Haven't voted, you haven't voted yet. <laughs> <laughs> did you want to know? So these prices may not be accurate. We have to go back right. and say, right. make sure that they're controlled. Right. So you want to make sure. Can, how can you somehow you got to, I don't know how much it is. Okay. But I have. So how about I amend the motion to say. Uh, with spending up to a thousand dollars for the Control. controller, if it's more than that, we need we want it to come back. Right. So I would amend my motion to include up to a thousand dollars for controller, so it can be con controlled. Okay. You second my amendment. I, I will. Okay. Oh, yeah. I thought. Now, do we have to yeah. vote on the amendment, amendment first? first. Yes. Yes. Right. So, all right. So yes, definitely second the. Amendment. Okay. Any discussion on the amendment? All in favor of the amendment for the extra thousand dollar cap. Dan? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Peter? Yes. Melanie? Yes. I'll vote yes. That's five yeses. Now back to the motion um, that we install the Mitsubishi from Buzzburn at the North Belgrade Community Center and split the money between the two accounts. All in favor? Yes. Dan? Barbara? Yes. Peter? Yes. Melanie? Yes. I'll vote yes. Five yeses. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you for coming and yeah. supporting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Carol, Thank you. I'd like to make a double motion. Okay. okay. I'd like to make a motion that we ask you all to kick in a couple thousand dollars towards us since the Rome food bank. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Dan. Yes, you know, I don't want them to take the whole thing, but if they could kick in a little bit, it would help. Yeah. That's a good idea. Okay. A great idea. So do we want to, do you, why don't you make the motion, do you want to approach them to help share in the cost or do you want to put a dollar well, on? I, we can do share in the cost to be negotiated. Okay. Just, just see if they're willing to throw something. So, so the quotes are separated 
How much it is for the food pantry? I believe it is. Uh, e, oh, I don't know. Well, some of them are. Yeah, yeah. depends on whether you use a split unit or a single unit. Yeah. Right. So you, maybe I'll go off that and try to get an animal. But it, it, even, uh, even if the third. Even if we took. Even if we got a couple split of Split in half and, and they took half of that. And went right. Yeah. Right. You know. It, it does list each area. Um, the food pantry is a 15K unit, and the general area is a 24 Okay, unit, but it doesn't break down by cost. So. Yeah, okay. but just you can see that it's more of a thing. Okay, so we do something. We, it is part of serving the role of the town of Rome. So I move that we ask the town of Rome to share in the cost of the food of the uh, heat pump units for the the service the food pantry. A second. Any more discussion? All in favor, Melon? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dan? Yeah. I vote yes. So we have the town manager draft a letter and the staff board signs it and then they send it to Rome. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, just all to right. explain to what we're doing. What we're doing and why we're doing it. Yeah, absolutely. And somebody might need to be prepared to go to their meeting. Go to their meeting. Be discussed. Which is on Monday night. Um, is it this coming Monday? It's every Monday, is I think it, yeah. I don't know. I guess every Monday. I I would go, except I'm not available this Monday. I'm going to be out of town, so. But we'll coordinate that. And yeah. We're also on the go. Okay. Mary. Our monthly department committee presentation. <laughs> no, I know they were going to leave. I'm no, like, don't I leave, don't leave. Yeah. Because we'll move it up. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that forward. Yeah, no, so um, just, uh, you know, I don't know if uh, everybody thinks of us as our own department, but the clerk's office is our own department. We are responsible for the collection of all of the monies for the town of that grade. Every single dollar that is collected in other entities runs through our hands. And we approximately between 10 to $12 million a year collect and deposit in the town accounts. We do, you know, not only the elections, we do all recreation revenues, we do all transfers. They may do their own deposits, but we are the people who are collecting those funds. And so right now we have we have a very good um, fund office staff. I'm very thankful for that we actually have a full staff now. <laughs> so it frees up some other time for us to do other things and other projects. Um, some of the projects that <clears throat> we have been doing that have been addressed um, to make it more of a smoother running operation, to make it more efficient for people coming into the office or people making phone calls. Um, we're trying to get everything, a lot of things um, in electronic format so that information is accessible. Um, one of the uh, biggest projects that I gave um, one of our newest employees in, he was so happy, it only took him three months, um, <laughs> was the uploading of the uh, tax cards to our GIS mapping. So we expend a lot of time and energy answering phone calls, going, getting the tax cards, scanning them in, and sending them off via email. Right. We are now directing all those phone calls to everyone who has um, the ability to get onto the Town of Belgrade website under GIS mapping, and you can find the tax card there. So all of those have been done. There were over 4,000. And um, nice job. yeah, it, it was a long job. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> he was not pleased, but he got it all done. So, okay, kept him busy. <laughs> um, but anyway, so that's, that's one of the things that we've gotten done. Um, we uh, recently um, have assisted with a code enforcement officer because we do try to support his efforts, knowing that you know he really has no secretary 
Kelsey does his planning board minutes, which is fine, but there are other uh, duties that need to be done. So uh, another thing that recently got done was uh, letters were mailed out to people who bought properties in the last two years that were transferred in shorefront um, regarding septic systems. Because one of the new state laws is that um, an inspection of your septic system needs to be on file um, with the public enforcement officer. So recently, I don't know, what did we mail out? Like maybe 200 letters. Quite a few, yeah. yeah. Got mailed out. Yeah, um, just, just, Hans, yeah. Hans said he's dealing with a lot of it now because right, it's, it's, it's really dug up a yeah. lot that he needs to address now, right. but right. it's good. So yeah. my, I, my phone calls have been like, oh my <laughs> God, crazy. I'm getting phone call after phone call. <laughs> so, <laughs> some of, so some of it's not sales. So some of that, and that was an error. Yeah. But, but it's, it's more than the person you're thinking of. I get a call. No, I, no, we had so. Yeah, <laughs> you know, family members putting another right. family member because they're getting older, so they're putting their children on their deeds, and that is. So it was what we were told is it was considered a transfer in a way because you were adding someone else on. Yeah. So so right. we just did what we were asked yeah. to do. Oh, yeah. So it has generated some phone calls from people saying, "What's going on?" You know, I've lived here for thirty years, and um, because you know because somebody got added to the of the deed, it's considered a transfer, which comes to us through main revenue in a transfer tax form. So. Um, anyway, we're taking care of that. Yeah, you guys, you guys gonna be busy for the next month. <laughs> so, Mary, when they call, just say, Well, fine, but do you know where your septic is? No, they <laughs> and when right. did you last check it? Yeah, um, no, they come in and they call and we tell them, You know, it, it's basically meant for those people who have purchased property in the last two to four years. I think we only went back a couple of years, and um, but um, but some people got caught that added on spouses that added on family members and um if it goes into a trust it also shows as a it transfer. still shows as a transfer right. yeah that's correct so so well so, i don't know that that's a bad idea to have those folks have a no it's just have yeah, a, I yeah. Agree. and they come in and so we, right we answer their questions mm -hmm. we resolve it we set their mind at ease and saying no you have no worries and um so is it is it typical enforcement that's doing an inspection or do they have to pay for an inspection? So what it is is at the time of the sale of real estate, um, agent is required by state law to inform the new owner that they have to provide an uh, inspection that's report on the sale, but, to on the sale, but, but the people, owner right with people adding a say adding a child to their deed. Now they're going to be quite an expense to have their septic system and say for instance. They still system. should have it inspected because well, probably it's been inspected. They should years. still too. Yeah, because otherwise you're going to have folks trying to scrub but, but to re right adding people to it and not having. So it so is it there can be issues and other issues. You know, like a customer I got today is they got a fairly new septic system. And the mother is getting old, so she put her daughter on the deed, and now we're going to have it reinspected. And the question to me was, well, how much is that going to cost? Well, and if they've had an inspection done, is there like some sort of a cabbage yeah, if you had an ins down. So if you had a new inspection system, if you had a new septic system put in five years ago, is there a piece of the law that takes care of that? There is no any any trend any sale any sale is you regardless if it's a year old you have to have it inspected. It's supposed to be triggered by a sale, not it by as someone to be sale. Correct. correct. Yes. And that's the problem is is as a lot of these is that I get phone calls. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. But we were told we did what we were told. Oh no, I ain't say I ain't saying if you guys can do what you're told to. I'm just saying it, it's general. I don't know about this office, but I know okay. my phone is going off the hook, and it's yeah. like no, we had quite a few phone calls about it because a lot of letters still go out, and um, we try to put people's um, minds at ease, and we do transfer it to to Hans and leave it in Hans's hands to resolve. So that's pretty much how we handle that. 
Okay, I didn't know that was going to generate so much conversation. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> well, we have subjects in training and zoning have been an issue for years that we right. have not been able to address. Right, and so, and this is supposed to take care of that. And I guess this is something that the real estate agents are supposed to be providing the information right. to the new property owners. owners but these cash sales, it sounds like it has. Um, right, these cash sales are just. Right, and Hans said he has not received one since he's been here. No, so, no, not no, one, no, not no. one. I do know that um, when Gail was still selling real estate, she brought some down and was told, "Why do I have this?" I do not know who is here. So it doesn't matter. I'm just yeah. saying yeah. there were. I know some were brought in, not to you, brought into the office. So right. part of it is. There's probably a pile somewhere in the files there. Yeah. Because there was a long discussion with that and between some of the lake groups is like, well, we take them. And so I just right. throw that on. So anyway, we're trying to help funds out in just small mm -hmm. ways like that and providing support. Um, our voting records have all been reconciled. Um, there are some people that we can't remove. I know by email recently from somebody um, regarding uh, the registrars um, being allowed to remove more people from the voting records. The thing is, is though the state only permits us to remove certain people, um, people who are sometimes deceased, if we can't find family members to fill out the paperwork, only they can remove them, or we have to go um, try and find um, a death certificate someplace. And if they didn't pass here, then we may not have it. So anyway, we're, we're, we have reconciled most of our voter records anyway. So everything's been cleaned up very nicely. Um, we put together over 400 uh, cemetery passbooks. That was uh, one of like my preservation projects. Um, and actually Kelsey, did it and Charlene did some of it before she left. So there were all, over 400 cemetery passbooks, and I don't know if you know what those are, but they're little tiny passbooks that date back into the late 1800s that were provided to people because that's how you pay for your cemetery lot. And you used to have to go to the bank to get it stamped, and the interest then would be generated into the town account. So it's kind of cool. And if you know you have some free time when you're in the office sometime, I would gladly pull one of the books out. And um, but they're, they're really interesting. They are really right. interesting. Yeah. It's um, incredible. Yeah, it is. So you know it's just preserving some of our history and the past. Um, our, Christmas club. Passbooks. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it is. Like it's easy. Yes, yeah. Old yes. downtown stores. And it's yeah. not just stamped, it's oh, run through sure. those machines that made all the holes. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? <laughs> like old I don't know if anybody remembers it, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, um, we mailed out um, early in the year um, homestead applications. We went through and reconciled everybody that didn't have a homestead application. And mailed out applications to everyone saying, hey, if you qualify for this, please read the instructions. Please fill it out because it is a benefit to you that's entitled to everybody uh, by federal law that's passed on to the states, that's passed on to the towns to implement. So anyway, so we did mail those all out. We didn't do the veterans because those are more um, detailed as to who's going to be getting those. Um, okay, so this is the part where I ask for some money. Um, <laughs> so we do dogs, we did the dogs, we did a good this year, good job this year. We got from over 400 unregistered dogs down to about 160, which is good because in all the time that I've been here, we've never had it that low. We still have 160 some odd dogs. We've sent out reminder notices. We've put out information in newsletters. It's been on the sign. We've made phone calls. We've, we've done um, a lot. And some people just are not going to come in and register their dogs. And that's the way it is. But we collected over $4,200 in late fees um, just for dogs. And that doesn't include 
the fees that we collected that we keep in our regular account. Those $4,200 go into a special um, animal um, control account. And uh, so we would like to use some of those funds. And I made a list about $2,500. Um, we want to do another clinic that we did last year, a rabies clinic, and tentatively that's set up for October 26th at the North Oak Ridge Community Center between um, 9.30 and 11.30 with Dr. Danner from the Animal Hospital. He did it last year, he did a great job. He only charged us for the cost of his worker that came to help him and the cost of the rabies shots. He did not charge his fee at all. So, so $500 is what I'm looking for for the rabies clinic. Um, we want to charge non-residents. Last year, we actually had more non-residents than we had residents. Um, we have people coming from West Garden. $10 a dog for non-residents yeah. because that's what they do in Oakland. So I feel that that's fair that we're charging them that amount of money. Um, I'd always... We've been doing a dog basket for the last four years. Last year, we did take some money out of that special account to do the dog basket, but three years prior, I was, we were paying for it with wearing jeans, but mostly I paid for it. <laughs> so I'd like to take another $200 out of that account for the basket itself um, to put together a nice basket. And what it does is those people that come in by December 31st of the year, their names will go into a basket. If you come in January 1st to January 31st, your name's not going into a basket. Yeah, but I think you should get one ticket for me, don't do that. It's not really good. Yeah. Exactly. Not one for you, two bad. <laughs> so moving on. <laughs> <laughs> How many dogs do you have? Six. Six. Oh my oh, word. I got four. Six dogs. Exactly. Four dogs. So if you um, pay him for dogs, it should be one per entry. Right? I think um, employees are exempt from being able to. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm not going to sign Yeah. So moving on, um, I, I went through the advertising again because it was helpful. People did see it from out of town. It did cost them three hundred dollars last year. I would like to do that also. Um, the advertising for, for the clinic? Yep, I put it in the newspaper. Both papers one day. Yeah. Uh, so that's five hundred dollars plus three hundred for the advertising. Plus two hundred. Two hundred. Okay. You're at a thousand. I've I've worked enough. Um, <laughs> But I'm just trying to make so, it like $300 is to advertise the rabies clinic. Yep. yep okay. Right. So the other thing, and this is something new that um, I would, I know that people sometimes have difficulty, especially people with so many dogs. <laughs> just getting their dogs to the vets and things. We did collect over $4,200, which is more than double of what we collected last year. And I'd like to take another um, $500 out and do $100 gift certificates um, to go in the drawing along with the baskets. So people would be eligible for these five $100 gift certificates for checks made out to their vet, not to them. So they can go to the vet and maybe use it towards getting their dog spayed or neutered or shots or whatever needs to be done. Okay, so I'm throwing that one out there. The other is um, $200 gift certificate for Dr. Danner, um, who did um, provide services last year of his own free time. And this year we'll be doing the same exact thing. And I'd like to just get him a gift certificate to a restaurant or something. I know there's that nice um, farm to table restaurant up there in Mercer. Yeah. What is it called? 22 something. Yeah, yeah. 122 yeah. Course. Of course. Of course. Yeah. 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 So that's that. And my last thing is $700 for mailing because that's what it costs. I thought it I want to get 700 for mailing. <laughs> I want to get um, cards out, early cards out to get as many people in here. I, I don't want to have to collect those late fees. I'm telling you, this job is the bane of the clerk's existence. 
having to collect for dogs because we get such a hard time and the courts in the front office get a hard time. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, people are going to shoot their dogs and they, we get yelled <laughs> at, we get too. screamed at, we get, you know. Um, so I would, I want to get some early mailings out and then I want to get some end of December mailings out to say, hey, if you're not in here by the 31st of January, you're going to, you're going to have a late day. We have people come in and, and they're, they're elderly. I don't know. If people just don't pay attention, not everybody's on social media. Not everybody has access to all the information. And you got some little old lady coming in here with five dogs and they're all late. And that's a huge, that's a huge whack. $250 late pool yeah. on, on top of the registration fee. So that's what I'm asking for. $2,500 out of that $4,200 of late fees collected. And I ran that by Jack, and he thought it was all a great idea. <laughs> so well, and uh, I want to give credit because I know when Jeff first started, the late dog registrations was one of his top priorities, and was working actively yeah. with you to try to right. You know, that and we did. We worked. Huge. We did a lot because we got it down. Um, yeah, I mean that's less than fifteen yeah. percent. Yeah, right. I mean it's more than fifty percent that is now registered. Right. So nice work. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't surprise me if some of the ones that we haven't registered that don't exist anymore. Um, actually, I know that some of them do. Well, some some of them people do. um can well afford to have oh, yeah. registered yeah. Right. They just are not. But I bet, I bet so. There's a bunch of them too that just the dogs don't exist yeah. anymore too. We've gone through. and We've tried to make sure because I had them go in and check. Does this person still live here? Does it, you know, and to make sure that they still are here because we figured that there probably were some people on the list. Um, there, I don't know how the new dog program is going to work because we just got noticed that uh, it's going online. So registration of all dogs for us now is going to be online. And right now we track it through Trio. So I'm not sure if we're going to have to do double duty, do it in Trio and do it online. Because when I run my report, what the online dogs are only going to have the dogs that I've currently registered. I don't know how it's all going to work. Mm -hmm. So we're supposed to be going through a training session here in the next um, next three weeks or so for this uh, new program. How, how are you informed of when people don't have their dogs anymore? Um, I'm well, just, I'm just we, curious. Like my daughter Sam. They used to have three dogs there. They have no single dog anymore. Mm -hmm. So how do you how do we find out? I know like when I've lost a dog, I've always notified that yeah, know, that's a lot of places. Some people don't. notify us, some people don't, but we we make phone calls of every single person on that list. So you and, can check them. Right. And so quite a few people did call us back and let us know, okay. you know, hey, we don't live here anymore, or our dog is deceased, we've had to put him down. And okay. so and we take their people's word for it. So but Bruce, this is not the time. Something you guys probably put on the agenda. Never agenda. What are you going to do about the hundred and seventy something or one hundred forty something that haven't registered their dogs and the rest of the town residents that have registered their dogs? <laughs> so I gave the list to. What I do. <laughs> what I do is if I have interactions with these people, and I'll address that then, and if I feel it's necessary, I'll issue a summons. Well, we should put a tax lien on them. A dog oh, that's, that, I, I guess that's what my question is going to be. That was <laughs> okay, it's not right and it's not fair that some of those people, because I know some of those people on that yeah. list, and, and they can well afford to to register their dog for six dollars. Well, they can well afford to pay the bill for a fifty fee. dollar late fee to each of them, right? Because they haven't registered. Them. The thing right. is, though, the state got rid of the dog warrant, so when they got rid of the dog warrant, there is no real. You know, unless Jeff gets a call, there's no real way to to charge and to go after them. So you can't. So town of Mount Vernon, you know where she is out in town of Mount Vernon. You have so many day, you know, so many days, and after that, the gentleman that does a Jeff job knocks on your door and says, "Here you are," and if you don't pay it, then somehow they. Put a lien on you, you know, if you don't pay it after so many days, you get a lien put on the house. 
Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that they can do that. Anyway, um, but I guess that's, job, that, that'll take job. a little research. Not to right. Yeah. Right. I'm just saying, if there's something needs to be done, I mean, it's no different property taxes. Mm -hmm. I said they're paying for our dog registrations, and then you got ones that are not paying for dog registration. I understand if it's a financial thing, that's up to them to sit down with the town man and say, hey, we can't afford it. Or maybe it becomes one of the things like, if you haven't paid it when you come in to register your vehicle, you have an outstanding balance for the town for $30 late fee for the stock. <clears throat> so now instead of it costing you $500 to register your vehicle, it's $500 to register your vehicle and your $50 late charge for your dog. Right. I just think it needs to be more fair because if most towns you go to, you talk to other towns, they either collect 100% of it or the or the ones they don't collect as PCs. I guess I'm not familiar with those towns. I know that Oakland does not. Uh, they used to. I don't they, know. They, they do not. not. They do not know. pursue it. Yeah. <laughs> to the clerk. They Jeff, do did you have a The question? thing is, is, is that Jeff works full time. Right. And to have him go out to 160 people's house, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. And so we thought we would, you know, try to resolve it. And we did get it down um, with sending out the postcards. Right. You can't force people, and I know most people, so when they come in and I know they're on that dog list, I usually hit them up. Our other two parks are not as familiar with people in the round as I am. And um, so, you know, but anyway, I think we did better than we did last year. And But um, well, you wouldn't know their license plate numbers, right? So, so the, <laughs> the ACL could go around and Right, mess put a, put a note underneath the windshield wiper oh, or something like that. Want to do that? <laughs> so when I do issue some of this, the person usually comes in and they'll pay to register their dogs, and then they'll pay the twenty five dollar late fee, and then they'll pay the fifty dollar waiver fee to avoid going in front of the judge. So yeah. So we had a few of those this year too. So that um rejected uh have a fifty dollar fee on top of the twenty-five dollar mm -hmm. late fee on top of the registration. So yeah. okay. Anyway, that was it. I is that it? it? That's it. Been busy. We've been I've been trying to keep them busy. I, I just don't want my workers bored. Um <laughs> <laughs> I got a question for you, Mary, on the back sure. of the voter list that you said you were going through. When people come in or request absentee ballots, mm -hmm. do you guys verify their addresses? We do. Okay. It's just I, I have a lot of problems. What happens is the absentee ballots, I get the list through the state and I send out postcards saying, thank you for voting absentee. I get back a stack of them every year that tall. That say undeliverable, no address on file, or so, so. I'm just trying to figure out if we verify these addresses because I don't want that change. So you're getting it through the Secretary of State's office. I think so. But sometimes they're college kids, and they do change, and we remove things off from. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, come I should, in and get a list. I, I get I get probably twenty or thirty from each town anyway. Yeah, that it says you can't. They can't be delivered to this address, and I'm going. I'm and did the people ballot. move? And did they still live here? Yeah. And so how, how, you know, that's that, how did they get that ballot? You know, they must have either come in and picked it up. So it's the absentee me. list, and not just yeah. the yeah, yeah, it's the absentee voter list. list. So I just want to make sure we're verifying the addresses. Yes, we do. Yeah. But they don't have to come in to pick up an absentee ballot. No, right? they can request it. No, right. If it's being mailed to the address we've got on file here in the town. Right. And I mail a postcard to that same address. How come my postcard's coming back as right. deliverable? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so that's what's confusing me on all these towns is I get stacks of these things back. Yeah, I'll have um, the other clerks. So usually we pay attention to that if um, people, because they will fill in a different address because now they've become <laughs> an and they're down in Florida. So all of a sudden we've got to send. So it may depend on the time that. I don't know. That's okay. did, I, that is printed sounds, out. Are yeah. you getting an old absentee that? Uh, well, see, I get a list like every three or four days during the election. Okay. Because right. every time you guys send in the, the 
the state, state it's mm -hmm. generated over to you know the candidates mm -hmm. so that you can okay. get a list, current list. So okay. I'll send out batches of postcards in okay. two or three days. I'll but, I'll just make sure that we're verifying it. Yeah, I'm just goes through. Yeah. Like, that's so yeah. Much. <laughs> I'm going to stack that tall. Well, see, now they have that ongoing absentee. So they started that for the June election. Yeah, well, this was last year. So okay. it's going to be your right. first now. Because now, you know, what if people move down? I have an ongoing absentee with an address already on it. And we have to keep a tickler file. It's not even in electronic format because. The Secretary of State's office hasn't upgraded their programs yet, so we have to keep a manual tickle tickle file um, to send these out. So anyway, uh, but I, just, no, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, thanks for bringing that to our attention, and we'll do a double check. Okay. Anyone have any other questions for Mary? Okay. Do I get my money? Lorna has a right. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't any motion. To vote. There wasn't any motion to vote on the funding. I was gonna, I know that. I didn't know if anyone had any other oh, questions okay. before we I, I, I thought you were moving on to the next thing. I was like, no, I was trying to I was trying to move us on to the next thing. All right. Okay. No, is that way that we'd have to authorize tonight or could we put that together in a whole list for the board to vote on at the next meeting? So then we have <clears throat> but I had scratched it on my paper, but <clears throat> yeah, and my list doesn't add up to 25. Mine adds up to 24. Yeah, I add up to 24. 24. We got 200, 700, 1200, 1500. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna make glasses. 14, 1500. Um, where are they? I mean, if we if we want a list, we could just go <laughs> okay. there and I, I, and authorize that for the next 24. meeting. It's yeah, twenty four hundred. It's twenty four hundred. Okay, it is. I wrote it. Are you comfortable with that, Melanie? I can do a list. Go ahead. I, 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 you want to wait I mean, minute. if you need a list. Well, let me just figure if we read out the whole thing in the next meeting and we say twenty dollars, two hundred dollars for this, this for this, for a total amount of twenty four hundred dollars coming out of. The special collection okay. reserve account. Yeah. Being a bozo, it's cleaner. Cleaner. Okay. If you put that on the agenda for next and week. <laughs> so the answer is I think you're probably going to get your money. Thank you. But it'll take two weeks. Confidence is high. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> moving right along. Thank you, Mary, for, thank you. Yeah, for coming and for all you're doing. And, and thank you, Sarah, for all the work you're doing, too. Thank because you. there's a I lot of them getting done. Because they are a good staff. Yeah. So. I'm so yeah. happy it's a full staff. It's it yes. nice that it's a full staff because it frees up time to be able to do other things. I mean, if yeah. you get to some files and, and get things uh, organized. There's a lot of stuff getting cleaned up and organized. Yeah. That's yeah. really good. Yeah. yeah. Really, really good, and especially doing things converting to electronically and yeah. adding like to the GIS map. Yes, yeah, like, that's huge. Yeah, that's good for yeah. the public. Yeah. It is yeah. okay. Our next item is appointments, resignations. So we have an appointment we need to make, Florida. No, we, we have none. Annual appointment, Lucy Klein. Oh, I yes, I appointed Lisa as Oh, okay. You're just letting us know. Yes, I think we need letting to you know. Okay. Yes, sorry. Perfect. Perfect. So noted. Um abatements and supplementals. Okay. I'll make you sit for this. Um, so I move we approve of abatement 2406 for Scott Parsons and Michelle. Belinsky homestead exemption was missed, and the amount of that abatement is $237.50. Any discussion? All in favor? Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dan? Uh, same. Right. And I'll vote yes. So four yes and one abstention. Um, I move we approve abatement number 2407 for Kathy and Kim Hudson. To correct the building information, uh, the amount of that abatement is $39.40. Yeah. 
I'll okay. second. I'll second that. <laughs> All in favor, Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dan? Dan. And I will vote yes. Four yeses and one abstention. Uh, I move we approve abatement number 2408 for Elwin and Laura Burton. Uh, new lot was split for 2024, errors in transfer of property information. Uh, the amount of that abatement is $3,075.15. Second. All in favor, Melanie? I have a question. Oh, yeah, this yeah. one's not making sense to me. Because yes. It says $30.40 of the real estate taxes, and down here, the difference to abate is $3,075. Yep. So, um, right. So, yeah. in the text, it reads two. There's a discrepancy on the oh okay abatement. issued an abatement oh and no. oh they put the real estate tax strikingly down. similar is the one the value from the previous one right yeah. mm -hmm. which was I, for Hudson which was for thirty dollars and forty cents I just think right. it was just an error in right mm -hmm. right but I don't want to abate thirty thousand if it's supposed to be thirty. Right. Okay, so we need to to be doing so we need what I think we need to ask for clarification yeah. from Rob and bring right. that to the next. So I move we table abatement number 2024 08 to so next meeting. Melanie seconded. Seconded. All in favor of tabling, Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dan? And I'll say yes. So four yes and one abstention. Okay. I move we obey, we approve abatement number 2409 for Deborah Tracy and Seth Williams. Uh, this lot was deleted in 2008, became active again in Aaron. The difference to the abatement is $396.15. Second. All in favor, Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dan? I'll vote yes. So we have four yeses and one abstention. Um, I move we approve abatement 2409. 403. Supplemental, not an abatement. No, that's a supplemental. Oh, the supplemental, I'm sorry. I move we approve supplemental tax certificate and warrant 36 MRSA section 715 for uh, the amount of $714.40 for Elvin and Laura Burton, correcting the ownership. Second. Second. All in favor, Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dan? I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll say yes. I assume that it's not my thing, but I can. Okay. Control. I vote yes, so that's five yeses. And then I move we approve supplemental tax certificate and warrant 36 MRSA, section 713 uh, for Leo Barnett. Uh, the amount of that is $17,059.40, and that is your correct ownership. <laughs> All in favor, Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dan? Yes. And I'll vote yes, so that's five yeses. So, Lorna, can you leave those on my desk um, when you're done tonight, and then I'll do them while uh, Robbie comes in Monday, and get him to fix that other one, but I'll put them into the computer, the abatements and the settlements. We send out those new tax bills. <laughs> okay, next order okay. of business. All right, have a good vacation. All right, take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, maintenance garage uh, request for updates for storage rep and plumbing. Is that Lorna, Corey? Okay, so um, you have an information about, we have several things. One is from the main CDC drinking water program, which discusses uh, temporary portable toilets. Um, also, uh, the need to have hot and cold running water and soap for a restroom and there is some information on an incinerator toilet, um, which was mentioned at the last meeting. Um, we also have an actual uh, spec'd out um, incinerator toilet that Corey uh, provided. And then we have 
from Central Main Concrete and Jacking materials for a slab, which would be the storage portion on the maintenance garage. Um, the topic of the restroom came up because if we pour a slab, then we would want to leave room for plumbing mm -hmm. um, under it. And I think there's, I think when you all, um, somewhere along the way, the water in the cemetery for some reason, I would assume they were gonna provide some sort of water over to that building because the pipe is yeah, the pipe is right on. Right yeah, right near the yeah. corner. Right. Correct. They they have the uh, when they do the public water. That was one of the things that the cemetery committee requested, and right. as far as I know, that's in the plan. If we ever get a plan, right. <laughs> um. So you have a couple of um. Well, that one doesn't. Even, um, yeah, so you have two different um, estimates for concrete work. And then um, you've already looked at this for another project tonight, but you also have the reserve account um, balances to look at uh, for the maintenance garage. And the weapon plumbing, is that you, Bruce, that does that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is happening. I just assumed that, but I like it. So, what's the storage for the slab actually for? We have we already outgrown the garage, so we need to keep that. Well, we still have. Have we outgrown it? It's never been big enough in the first place. So, when we originally did the siding on the building, we had talked about adding on a, a lean to to keep stuff seasonal out of the weather. Um, the header is already there. It's already when they sided. They put the metal on it already, wrapped it, so it's already there. All right, um, so basically, it's a lead to it. It's just going to be a lead to it, except for the section of the that's okay. going to be for the bathroom, if if it ever takes place. It's going to be that's that'll be ten by ten insulated, ten by twelve insulated. Um, yeah, and as we had said earlier, when you asked about the roofing from Dalton, right. That's what it's being saved for, is that oh, okay. addition. Mm -hmm. That's why we had it taken off instead of just thrown away. So that would be worth getting the value of that when we look at the Dalton stuff, just to know that we save X amount of dollars. You yeah. might be. Probably wouldn't be much, but it's definitely a savings. Yeah, I mean, we save so, it. And that, that's the reason that the whole. 500. Yeah. The whole thing is to get Bruce involved, put a rough in the plumbing. Mm -hmm. um, we did the uh, septic survey to make sure we weren't encroaching on something we shouldn't be encroaching on. Mm -hmm. We weren't going to pour a slab over where a pipe had to go. Because in the past, when somebody talked about a septic system, they had been talking about pumping. Well, we don't have to pump with the way it's built. So that's why that. So basically what we're looking to do. And I think looking at this, we're going to have to go out to bid for the concrete slab because they didn't really quote the same thing. Um, is just to make sure that we're doing everything properly. Mm -hmm. What it boils down to. <clears throat> well, we've talked about it before, but now we're coming before you guys officially. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, is that a good question? Yeah. I just was trying to pull when we first. We didn't put a slab before the garage was built. No, there's a slab for the garage, but there's no oh, so the lean to. Okay, okay. slab. Yeah, yes. I was like, oh, my <laughs> God, we have done that. <laughs> but then we set up a maintenance garage capital reserve account for right. 2019, correct? Right? Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know. I just I it was 2019. I know you told me all this. Uh, I said before your time. Before my time, yeah. Um, if you look at that, please, the very last page of that section, it is just had it. Uh, 601 00. So there's 36, 662, 30 in that account. Mm -hmm. So these are our capital reserves. Correct. 
Would there like fund balance expense revenue? What are the government capital reserve accounts, correct? These these are fund accounts that you see. Okay, so I'm looking specifically for the 601 reserve that we specifically set up. I thought it was 2019 that we had requested that the capital reserve be set for that building. So is this capital reserve is just this? This is the capital reserve account, the 601 for the maintenance garage. And is there anything else that's supposed to come out of this before the end of the year? No, I think this was what the plan was. This, yeah. this, this year was that. That's what, what that we budgeted was. that when we requested those funds. And of course, there'll be some two by sixes. But you're not doing stuff. you're not doing a bathroom this year. No, you just but we'll frame it. But you need to make room allow right. for you need to before you pour the slide. Right. right. Yeah. Just prepping and getting advantage of a room, basically. Right. Yeah. Okay, so if it's going out to bid, what what do you need from us? Because we can't approve it. Well, I think we were really looking to approve it, but that's not going to happen. So I just want to, I, I will get with Bruce. We'll get uh, uh, apples and apples okay. thing and put out an RFP, and then you guys will see that. Next, next, next meeting? Next meeting, probably. Okay. okay. Because I, I noticed that... Uh, one company is going with 10 inches and then they're using the fiberglass or the, it's not fiberglass, Kevlar, concrete. Right. And some one's going 12 inches. So we're just going to, Bruce and I will sit down and just say, spec it, spec it. So it's like okay. them all. Yeah. Okay. So you're not looking for action from us tonight. You're more educating us on where you're headed and point, make sure yeah. we're yep. in agreement. Yep. yep. Okay. All right. Anyone have any more questions? No, Melanie asked the one I was going to ask, which is, do you anticipate other expenses? Because it seems like with this expense, whatever it is, if it comes in close to this. I don't know thing, what you put in there, but I think there was, we had talked like a couple thousand dollars for offer. Yeah. Three thousand. That's three thousand. Okay. There yeah. we go. That, that's all fine. Yeah, that's you know, yeah. Because the total still leaves you money in the account. Yeah. I just want to make sure you were comfortable if this was going to be expended that you you weren't down to zero, but it no. sounds like you're good. So I'm I'm good at this point. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Okay. That takes us to a new business. Good deal. Woo -hoo -hoo. Uh, before Corey leaves, can I ask a question? Yeah. Earlier this year, before summer rex camp and stuff, we asked that something be put over the well now at the rec center. Yeah, we talked about that the other night. Because you know, I watched kids, I watched kids climbing over the bean hole supper and tripping over it and everything else. And still, I'll like, have something over it this week. I had asked for it to be covered before the bean hole supper because your wife and I covered it last yeah. year. She and I held a picnic. I know. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I, when I walked down and watched kids trip over, I went, "Wait a minute! This, this spring, we asked that this get taken care of, and it still had some nuts." So. Was that the one by the playground? Yeah. Yes, yeah. in the playground. Yeah. No, I don't care if you go buy one of those <laughs> little fake. Looks like a well. well yeah. it's, 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 like a well. So that's, it's high enough so the guys aren't going to run away. Well, the other thing is, it probably should be here after the being whole summer. Does that sort of that we have that covered? They yeah. <laughs> said we we physically yeah. covered it. So but then the other hand, like this freaking thing still isn't covered. Yeah, because that, that is, is so a dangerous. that is a water source for dolphin properties. We're gonna saw our all in. We're just gonna have something over it. No, I'm just saying to protect because you got wet. You know that is that is why it is. Yeah, that's hard. So can't you get a fake rock? Don't they have covers that look like a rock? Yes. Well, then you're gonna have kids climbing on it. Yeah, I think if you pull one of those, something something well on a move. Little crank well that you used to, you know. And you know. there's a ton of pens in it. Okay, that's money for town. <laughs> it'll, 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 it'll be covered. Make some wishes. Um, yeah. But yes, please find a way to have okay. it covered. <laughs> yep, yeah, it'll be covered. Good. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> you can go home, Corey. Okay. <laughs> Are we going to plant around the wobbly one? No. Right. I'm going to have a guy look at that. Oh. Um, <laughs> And I don't know, maybe you guys know, was there a reason that that was concrete and not hot top where the walkways are? Because I'm going to get a quote for concrete tomorrow and pay to, to redo those walkways over there. I, I don't know. Was there a reason? 
was I paid the expense. I was going to say it was probably cheaper at the time because I just was reading something the other day about the history on the building and how when we cut stuff in the system. This is how we paid for it in the long run. Yes, I she, read some of that. Cheaper, cheaper is not. It's not terrible. Always better way to go. Oh, no. It's Every terrible. Time. It's not always the better value. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Good Other business? Yes. Um, Katie Cog, it is time to appoint your official representatives for the General Assembly. Um, General Assembly is the primary policy making body of the council. It is comprised of the official representatives of member municipalities and counties. Each town will appoint an official representative and an alternate. Um, so at least one of the representatives must be a municipal officer, which would be elected official of the town board of selectmen, town or city council, so one of you. Um, and then alternate will act in the place of the official in the event they are unable to act because of conflict of interest, physical incapacity or absence, but are invited to attend all meetings. Um, and they would like this uh, notification back to them by August 30 um, of whomever you all would like to uh, choose for this. And is it for all of their meetings or is it just for one particular meeting? Um, let's see here. It's a two year term. Uh, municipal officers who serve may serve only during their respective terms in office and shall serve at the pleasure um, of the municipal officer, the officers of the municipality. It doesn't tell me. Um, it doesn't tell me. I think it's just that general assembly meetings. I do not know how often those are. I can find out. It's not, I mean, I'm on the board. I mean, we meet every month. Mm -hmm. um, but General Assembly, I think, is maybe once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. Like if it's the first or third Tuesday, we might want to. We might want to. They, do it, uh, yeah. they do it during the day. Oh, during the day. Yeah. Do we want to put that on the next meeting? Yeah. It's not due till the end of the month. So yeah. we'll give us a chance. We've got till the 30th. So yeah. we'll just put it on that. Which one we're going to tell us on there? Mm -hmm. Anything else? I have something. Under oh. your business. I'm just concerned about the short term, no wait, the ad hoc short term rental committee that's just stalled because at this point we only have three people plus Peter as a select board member. And so I feel like, you know, Kathy Wall said she would do it for six months. And I'm hoping that, you know, that means six months once the committee finally gets going. Exactly. But I mean, I feel like it was, you know, such an urgent issue right. Right. Um, when it first came up. And it's nothing is, you know, we haven't moved on it to make it happen. And, and so I don't know if we can approach one of the people from who brought up the issue initially with 142 Woodland. Um, mm -hmm. To get somebody from that group on it, but I just feel like, and I don't know if we set a number, but I feel like we need, you know, a couple of people five. on that committee, probably five people, um, so five, five voting members plus Peter. Right. So we would need, you know, two more people. And I reached out to this Brent Kreiso, who seems like the perfect member, but he, he just hasn't gotten back with mm -hmm. me. So um, I guess I can try to follow up again. But yeah. I just feel like this is kind of. Yeah, you know, the Lakes Committee is doing a great job as far, far as uh, the environmental portion that we right. asked them to look at. And I just feel like we need to, mm -hmm. you know, get a little more action on the short term rental. Mm -hmm. um, I'm willing to go back to some of the some of the folks in the short on that 142 group and see if they'll come up with a name. OK, well, then why don't we post something under the town of Belgrade thing on Facebook and then we can grab it and share. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'll follow up again with Brent. I feel like, you know, I sent him a text with a lot of information in it, and then he never got back to me. So I thought, oh, maybe he's really not interested after all. But mm -hmm. um, he seemed like he would be, you know, a really good person to be involved in. Yeah, okay. that's all I had. Okay. I have one small business. I talked to Mary about it. 
happened to be, uh, I went over to Rome when they presented uh, Richard LaBelle. Oh, the yeah. Boston Post King mm -hmm. over there. And I was talking to Bella Richard LaBelle, the other one that's the town manager up in Orangewood. Yeah. Rome doesn't have the Boston Post King. It disappeared years ago. So, yeah, a lot of towns, it's disappeared. But that's why it's supposed to be presented to the person they're supposed to keep it until they die and supposed to come back and find it. Right, yeah. That's why we don't send that out because they disappear. But I guess there's a company over in Peterborough, New Hampshire, that <clears> makes <throat> a very close replica of these canes. And what, like Richard LaBelle and Norridgewalk does, is they have a bunch of made up for five of them have them. Stuck in a closet. Yeah. And when the person is presented with Boston Post came, they get the picture taken with that one. Obviously, they don't get to keep it because that's that's it's all right. old head on. Um, but they get to keep the replica, you know, it's a oh, great okay. town of Belgrade. Yeah. You know. mm -hmm. So they're they're like a hundred bucks for these canes. So I think it would be <clears throat> well worth it to think about having some of these so that people actually could have. The keepsake. The keepsake, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. A good idea. That's a good that's idea. A great idea. Yeah. Rome would spend the money to buy him one. The family had to go turn around and buy it themselves. <laughs> and then Rome actually asked him, can you have it back? <laughs> and they said, no. <laughs> and they did that to Dick LaBelle, who was yeah, been right. such a giver to the community. Yeah. yeah. Interesting choice. But, but yeah, talking to, you know, uh, Alan and, and his son, Richard, mm -hmm. the, they, you know, you can buy these, have these replicas of real nice looking game. Mm -hmm. I think and that's a great idea. Nice. We still kind of guilty, like, okay, thanks. We're going to put it back in the yes. case. Put it back in case, and you're going to get yeah. the name on the little tag in there. Yeah. So it would be nice if we put a tag like that on the replica. And, and well, I think that's, they have, you could have it engraved on the top of the cane, too. So, I mean, it's yeah. just, mm -hmm. you know, something. Yeah. But it just, I think it would be nice as a presentation. It's not really a lot, a lot of money. And it's yeah. how often do we actually get one out? It's, you know, not you know, usually often. it's a few years between them. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes some folks said they didn't want them because oh. shortly after that, yeah, yeah all that. But, but, but no, this last one has been, but, yeah. I think it's four years anyway. Okay. Do you so, want to? Move that we do that. Well, I just want like, oh, to just at least have them want to get a hold of Richard up in the north no. block and oh, find okay. out no. where they're getting them from. We can okay. call and get a quote on them and find out what yeah. it costs and okay. yeah. we'll bring Good it back idea. to the board. Mm -hmm. Great idea, Dan. Good thinking. Yeah. And yeah, this is for, of course, for you guys, but another meeting. Um, need you guys to, we're coming up to budgetary time. So, we'll need you guys to um, try to come up with the president, what you're looking for from the budget committee. Um, well, I think this year we have to set a cap. Right. I asked several times last year, and we didn't do a cap, and we had some budgets went up ten percent. And so uh, that's what we need. We need, you know, we need that from you guys. So we have right. always established two percent, three percent, five percent. What is the maximum that we want to see fluctuation? Right. So mm -hmm. we have to do that. And. The other thing is, is just keeping back in mind, we got the short term thing that kind of died. I don't want the same thing happen on this citizen's petition. We mm -hmm. said we'd have something for them for town meeting. I just want to make sure we keep the ball. Yeah. No, we have that we come back court. in yeah. 60 days. So we have. Right. Yeah. And yeah. one other thing I should have asked before we see here, what are we doing with Terminex? Because there's still bugs in this building. They're, they're still coming. Some of the bugs. My understanding, some of the bugs don't respond to some of the baits that they put out. We've called several times, and I see this one, one there, but I don't see. Yeah, it was one old thrown around by Melanie. Somebody oh. still. <laughs> <laughs> I, I that, that was twenty minutes ago. Oh great! I'll, 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 I'll remind Corey again to contact them because I do see that one there. Yeah, I mean, oh, that one's gone. Hazel stepped on that one during the game. Yeah, <laughs> that one will land at home between Peter and Melanie, and I lost sight of them after a while. That is an agate. Yeah, it is. So, that is a maggot right now that is crawling across the floor. So, Carry on. super okay. nasty out. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but it is. It's a new building. I just don't want to see it full bucks. 
that is the one thing that I have learned. Has anybody been in Sorry, you wouldn't be, you could go by that, you wouldn't be my wife's office. The air conditioner failed. She had, well, it, the companies can't put a new one in. It's 150 grand, 160 grand until the seven time but I walked into the conference room to do the cleaning this week. Everything, chairs, carpet, everything's molded. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. It, it's great. They went into the other day and they had that surf pro go over and they had air quality tasks and they can't work in the office and they'll like pick them over. Oh my gosh. So, you know, they surf pro came over and put in that's dehumidifiers. <laughs> so, that's the other thing that you just give you guys as a board a heads up. Heat pumps are great, but it's starting to be an issue of heat pumps. And I have a feeling eventually insurance companies are going to start putting them down on this. There's been tons and tons of water damage because of heat pumps. I mean, like, we just put them in some <laughs> well, you have to have them in service. We right. had because we have them at home and we've had them the yeah, yeah. it plugs up, yeah, and yeah. so it won't drain so, outside, it will drain inside. So, I'm going to talk to Jeremy when he does this service. I did it at my house. There's little things we can put in, just just be aware that sort of like if you've got a center up in your vehicle, there's a drain that you have to clean. Right. There it is. Right. Yeah. If, if not, it runs in around the places where your visors bolt up and everything else. Yeah, it'll come right into your headline. Yeah. yeah, but just be aware that we could eventually down the road see damage from that. I'm just yeah. I'm just worried about these things if it's because we have drains, open drains running and the moisture is causing from them drains, it's causing these about you know, it's something you may have to ask sort of it's coming up, you know, coming up before drains or whatever. I know we could figure out why they did before drains. We've off. had the we've had the beetles since I've been here every year. Just so and I wonder, I wonder if it's because of the rain, the wet in the ground makes some drives them in. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about beetles. No, I just I just okay. It's, it's right. Can it's we right. get on to warrants? Yeah, we have to. Okay. I move we approve warrant number 81 in the amount of $29,257.44. Second. All in favor, Melody? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dan? Yes. I vote yes. Five yeses. Uh, I move we approve warrant number 82 in the amount of $35,767.55. Second. All in favor, Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dan? Yes. I'll vote yes. Five yeses. I move we approve warrant number 83 in the amount of $16,092.40. Second. All in favor, Dan? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Uh, Peter? Yes. Melanie? Yes. And I'll vote yes. Five yeses. We'll get some confused if you stick to the one direction. <laughs> <laughs> I move we approve warrant number 84, the amount of $1,000. Second that. All in favor, Dan? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Peter? Yes. Melanie? Yes. I'll vote yes. And I just Bye. want to be sure this money, so the money that was collected that was to pay some of these extras, that comes into the town and then we pay out. Correct. I do not know that this comes in to the town already. This is part of the budget. Because this the is the rec budget. This is the part that we need to check because we had set kind of a cap on where we we're going to spend. And we understood that sometimes some musicians were going to get home. So this is $1,500. We got $1,000 on this one. So <clears throat> We two, need to yeah, find two, out. At five, two at 500, 500 each for two different performances. Right. So on this one, I think on the last one, it might have been 1500 because there were three different charges on the last one. So I just want to make sure that there was the fund that was established, um, Lake Point or somebody contributed money. So that money is coming into the town, into the recreation budget for this Village Green concert money, Good. and then we're spending the money. This is part of Dan's budget. Right, but we were not going to spend, I think we had said $4,000 was for some reason the numbers in my head. And then because they wanted to be able to pay more to have better musicians, they were collecting money. 
to pay for those musicians. So I just want to be sure that that, that loop is closed, that we're not still just funding it. That money's come in, but it's not coming in to pay for those military concerts. Yeah. Well, it says rec program special, so. Right. Okay. All right. Um, I move we approve warrant number uh, 85 in the amount of $3,573.76. Second. All in favor, Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dan? Yes. I'll vote yes. It's five yeses. I move we approve uh, warrant number 86 in the amount of $40,377.62. Second. Okay. All in favor, Dan? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Peter? Yes. Melanie? Yes. And I'll vote yes. Um, that's five yeses. I move we approve warrant number 87 in the amount of $34,598.79. Second. Second. All in favor? Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dan? Yes. I'll vote yes. Five guesses. Um, now, on warrant 88 and 89, which is a change for what you had in your books, um, your, we originally had one for 695000 They had a, a programming um, mishap, so they had to redo them, and it got split into two units. So um, with that explanation, I move we pay warrant number 88 in the amount of $50,020.09. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, Melanie? Can you just walk me through that one more time? Yeah, because I'm so, confused. I don't have that. So I, okay. I gave you updated information. The original warrant 88 was actually 695,000. When our treasurer went to print the checks, some of them did not print properly. She could not reprint them. So she kept the good ones and the balance. She went in and re redid the entries by creating a new warrant, which is warrant 89. So those those two warrants totaled the same amount that you originally saw electronically, but but they are two they are two warrants eighty eight and eighty nine. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I don't know where it falls. I don't have that, so I don't know where it falls. But I do have questions on certain items in the warrant. So. Okay. Why don't Why don't we go through the questions? The yeah, because these it's a combined number. Um, attorney fees. Um, of course, I'm a big one on this one. Um, okay. I'm well, looking at uh, Vernia and sorry, and Nelson for eight thousand nine hundred and seventy four total. Mm -hmm. Um, one one on that. How are we doing budgetary wise on attorney fees? Are we staying within budget? Are we going over budget? We haven't gone over yet. How close are we? Or I don't I don't have that, but I can get that for you for some we can know okay. to get um, that. Some of this I know like like the Martin land that should be coming out of the fire department. Right, that, and that's coded to fire department. Okay, okay. And um another one I'm trying to find so um, one was dumpster for Gregory's for the month of July for the ball field. Um, wish I, I could find it on there. $126. Yeah. Zero, 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 eighty-two. Um, is that our monthly charge for them? If it is, that's, uh, we can do it a lot cheaper. Says July. It says July. That Corey didn't rent that. The um, K West. K West. Thank you. 
are the ones who had rented that. But it's being paid by the town. It, it was turned over to the town because it was already rented. Okay, so I guess my question is, is once again, we can buy some trash, in, trash, big trash barrels, put your trash in trash barrels. We have seven employees. We can pick up our own refuge monthly for less than that. Or we can hire it out to an in-town contractor for less than that. Um, that's one. And then waste management dumpsters, there's two of them, one for the North Dunbury Community Center and one for the Center for All Seasons. And if that's a month of July, that's, we're talking $600 a month for trash removal. And this is why I wanted it to be on an open meeting so we could discuss this. I thought we talked about it the last time and the problem is that there, with all the rentals, um, at both the Center for All Seasons it's, and the North Belgrade Community Center. It still doesn't matter. I mean, if you if you set up barrels, the big barrels, I mean, other, other towns do this and don't use dumpsters that have their own facility maintenance. You just put your trash in the barrels and you dump, dip, dump it out. Or same thing is you offer it to a in-town contractor that does, has a permit with the town to dump, and give them the opportunity to bid on these. They don't even get an opportunity to even bid on them. They have it, they have to have the big insurance policy and so on and so forth. But I mean, we're up to, you know, we can take what we paid waste management, it was over $200 a dumpster for the month of July. And what we paid Gregory's, they're pushing $600 a month. That is outrageous. You need to see if that's a monthly fee or yeah. if or if it's a cumulative, that may be two months together. We don't right. know. Well, right. What, if the right. North Belgrade Community Center says set up, so that might be that might be a one time thing. So we'll have to check that. So would that be a Lauren Corey thing? Or ask Lauren and Lauren Lauren to Lauren Lauren check. paying two hundred and forty six dollars for them to set up downstairs. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we could have gone out and bought barrels for that. The nice big barrels that are on wheels have a flexible cover. So this is um, this looks like two months waste management because there was a previous balance. So it doesn't look like it was paid. For waste management, and I'm looking for Gregory's. It's, it's I think, on page two. So yeah, two no, I'm five. looking. Uh, it's these are supposed to be alphabetical um, in here. So I'm looking for G for Gregory's, but I don't see. Um, Gregory's here. I've got Giuliano. Oh, here's Gregory's. Got it. Got it. Okay, so this this has uh, May, June, July, and then August. So there's more on Gregory's than just. July. Okay, no, so are. a four yard, let's see, a four yard July one to July thirty one, uh one twenty six ninety five, and a two yard uh Smithfield Road. Okay, so that that looks like that was part of the charge. Remember when we had the original dumpster at North Belgrade. Mm -hmm. So it looks like um, there was a partial charge, like a week or something, uh, first week of July uh, at the Smithfield Road address. So that equals 126 of both of them? Looks like it, yeah. Still, well, to me, that's when we have, you know, 
free facility trucks and we have amount amount of people working. I mean, it, they're at these buildings at least minimum weekly. Most buildings they're at daily. I like to say it's recycling too. Yes, because it, it's not getting any recycling. It's all going right to dumpsters. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on the board? Well, as far as that, I would like to have the town manager double check and see if make sure the state rates for uh, equipment uses haven't changed and compare them and make sure that the different charge right, you know, make sure they haven't gone up and we're underpaying or, or overpaying either way. But I just want to make sure that we check those once in a while. For Jason. Yeah. And one other thing, maybe um, Lauren have Ken check with waste management about that setup fee that they charge in North Belgrade. I'm sure Ken can probably get that fee. Especially considering how many times they've been late to a pickup after transfer. That's coming up at our meeting, Monday night's meeting, but yes. Kenny, so stop him. We've talked about it a couple of times, and he let me know this week that he was still having. Trouble and he was going to go to well he went to Pete with yeah. uh La Chapelle last time, but he was gonna talk. The problem is that they're using AI to do the um routes and AI has no idea <laughs> because it's not a person um about the relationships and what the needs are of the people where they need to go and pick up so it's creating the schedule for the driver and it's extremely difficult for the driver to change it but the drivers are trying to do the best they can to accommodate to be where they need to be um for people who need a pickup at a certain time so I mean, they they give Kenny a four-hour window of when they're going to pick up, and that just doesn't work. Well, that well, they don't show the up. Transfer station is open. Yeah, they don't even and show up. They have to find a second location for people to bring their household trash to until they do that. Well, I don't. I don't. I know my son. He had. I mean, he's able to do it. He's got two trucks, but he had overload because they had no room to dump it. So he had overload. So we did dump it, and it didn't end up. So that was on Saturday, and it didn't end up dumping it until Wednesday at two o'clock. So it's a it's a problem, and we're gonna I'm gonna have that discussion. Maybe we need to bring them back in to our transfer station committee meeting, and yeah, because we're not gonna pay yeah. extra if you guys aren't coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're supposed to be correcting some stuff, but I think that set up the. I think if Kenny talks to them of all the other issues, I'm sure he can probably get that. Wiped right away, but I still think we need to think about doing our own. I just I hear him grumbling in town, and once again, they don't call such persons all the time. They don't call town manager all the time. They go to the committee. I haven't had one person come. They go to committee that. people because we are on the committees, and that's what we're committees are for. And this is a grumbly year. So like, why do we have dumpsters? And guys are at the building, or why do we do this? Why do we do that? Some stuff I can answer. Dumpsters, I can't answer. I can't answer. I've been a guest of dumpsters since day one and I could not that no red lakes. And I just have a quick question. So are you done? I'm done. Do we generally outsource our tax bills? Do we what? Trend to outsource the tax bills. Yeah. So I thought they used to put right out of Tria, which was probably remember Dan when we were talking about yeah, the coupon system. Yeah, I've done that in a while. The tax bills are yeah, you know, they're Because there was something about we wanted to add like keep on so that we could pay ahead like Manchester and them doing and we were told that trio wouldn't allow. Right. So I guess in my head I was still thinking we did trio because we're paying a thousand dollars just to have them print our tax bills. I think the file gets generated from TRIO, and then that information is sent to the printer, and then they send a sample of how the bill looks, and we have to approve it before it gets printed. So if there's something that we want on there, we could check into that. So yeah. we're paying a thousand, and then we're paying postage, right? Yes. So. Are they direct mail from the printer? I believe that they are. Yes. They usually notify us when they mail them. Anything else for the warrant? Okay, so 
Uh, we have a uh, with warrant number 88 was seconded. If there's no more discussion, all in favor, Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dan? Yes. And I'll vote yes to five yeses. And then the other portion of that warrant is uh, warrant number 89, 645,942 dollars and 33 cents. Second. All in favor, Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Farmer? Yes. Dan? Yes. Okay. Um, I move we approve warrant number 90 in the amount of $30,779.64. Second. All in favor. Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Farmer? Yes. Dan? Yes. I'll vote yes, five yeses. And uh, I move we approve warrant number 91 in the amount of $29,844.45. Uh, all in favor, Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dan? Yes. I'll vote yes. I'm sorry, who seconded that? Melanie. Oh, no. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay, that brings us to the town manager's report. So attended the seasonal residence meeting, uh, the Lakes Fire Station visit committee members uh, in Senator Collins' office met. Um, work on a claim handbook updates with select person Barbara Allen and town clerk and tax collector Mary Bogle. Railroad maintenance should be complete by the time we meet on the 6th, but I see they're not. They are done at Bartlett Road. I came over today. Hopefully they don't plan on closing 27 tomorrow. It is. Okay. Yeah. I, haven't had, I haven't had any notification. The details are not even posted on yet. No. Well, the sign that yeah. says they're closing on the 7th. On the 7th. Oh, yeah. Yes, tomorrow. So that means people will really use the depot road or Augusta. Right? Well, this is what they did in Reefields. I hope they don't do it yet. What they do? They shut every road off and get through refuel. So you either had to go all the way to Winthrop or all the way to Belgrade to get to refuel. Oh my God. Okay. Oh, it was a state before they shut down 27. And only shut 20, they shut Route 17 down for five days. Okay. Goodness. Um, I'll, I've got a note. I'll email Luke and see if there's any update and I'll push that out to all of you. Appreciate it. Um, dig safe records. Uh, with no process of previous records in place, um, I've implemented the procedure of requesting copies of all records from contractors who do work for the town, along with records from our road commissioner. I've begun receiving these and they are printed and kept in a file in the front office. In addition, I requested and received a dig safe record for the workman field from Hollowell Construction. Native notions hand dug for the historical sign installation and used the existing dig safe lines for the tree replacement. Mm -hmm. Our road commissioner Jason Stevens provided copies of dig safe tickets for culvert work in town. This should help provide good records going forward. Our domain, our domain name has been approved. Um, currently working with Civic Plus and our IT team to get the updates completed. Um, the Civic Plus gal has just reached out to me um, and said that she will be in touch with me on Monday um, to work on the uh, website to me. So good news. Uh, the speed signs that enter and exit the village, I see they're working now. Yeah. Uh, they were not working because they were in stealth mode because I asked, <laughs> I asked them why they weren't working. And he said they were in stealth mode. And what they were doing is they were actually gathering data and they're going to use that data to compare with the data from the signs when they work. Because obviously when they're they blinking at you and telling, you're, telling you you're going too fast, right? You have a tendency, right? So, yeah. on. so they're, they will compare that data. Well, the one about the fire station is about three miles an hour off. Is it? I looked when I looked at I saw it come on, so I looked at my speed on and I was like, man, well, three three miles an hour difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um to help provide better detail and information with bills and invoices coming in, we've ordered and provided special stamps to all department heads 
Our new treasurer, Lisa Klein, has organized space in the treasurer's office to sort invoices for each department with department heads coming in and reviewing, approving, and stamping each for the next AP warrant. The system seems to be working well and has been well received by each department. A sample of the stamp is included. So I, it's pretty big, <laughs> but it really does it's help. Good. Yeah, they have to come in and um, say what department, what the expense line is, give a description, and they have to sign off on the um, initial. Um, for safety reasons, we are putting some new parking signs on one side of the West Road near the Village Green so that in an emergency, fire trucks and other emergency vehicles can get through also on Lakeshore Drive. That came to my attention um, a couple of weeks ago, week ago. Um, during a concert, and there were people parked on each side of the road, and you would never have gotten a fire truck in an emergency. Okay, also. No. I don't know that yet, but Dan. <laughs> if you don't <laughs> you know that, that yeah, hopefully the signs will. The <laughs> right? I'm hoping. It would be like you don't know, use the fire truck to get the fire truck over. <laughs> Uh, have like dance. Oh, dance. Oh, dance. Oh, dance. Oh, dance. oh my gosh. Um, are you going to be gone? I am. Okay. Because we didn't get anything. So I'm turning this one over. This is the one that we held. So I'm going to flip that over in here because okay. that one will generally sign in. Yeah. So how long are you going to be gone for? Uh, I'm not gone yet. So I hadn't said anything yet. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, what? Did somebody say something? No, I was just saying a few. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, we're going to go up to the Allagash. Okay. Yeah, I'll gone? be gone all week, the rest of the week. So Thursday, Friday. So you just off two days, you'll be back Monday. I, I will be back Monday. I'm not sure if I'll be in Monday. I'll be back Monday because we'll be back late ones, uh, Sunday night. So, so in your absence, and you want to take phone calls, you're going to be in the out again. So who's going to be running the office? I have internet access and I have cell phone access. I'll have my phone and my laptop. So if there is an emergency, I can take that. Okay. You know, just normally don't do that. If you're going on vacation, just be gone for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Normally, to tell Clark. <laughs> so, uh, yep, it, and that's how it's always been. If there is an issue, I usually put a thing on my email so that if somebody emails, they get the automatic. And if it's an emergency, they can contact me if they need help to contact Mary. And I usually give her email and the phone number in that automatic reply for email. Yes. One thing you need vacation, so you need to you need shutdown time. <laughs> everybody, everybody needs shutdown time. You know what I'm saying? Yes, you still should be able to be contacted as an emergency, but you should, you know, you tell your employees to take I know shutdown I know. time. I you do. need to take shutdown you're, time. I know you're absolutely right. Um, we've ordered a new laptop for fire and rescue to replace an aging system that became unsecure i think it actually failed it i'm not sure what program it runs it runs our um voice text for dispatching okay and it's right yeah. now even the new one's not like actually do some little program because it's we get static okay um and we went through a uh, main tech for that. So main tech worked with Trav to get that um, going, but there seems to be an issue. Uh, one for facilities, we have the portable speed sign. So we've got to get it um, set up. You have to have a laptop to do that, to talk to the sign. Corey tried to do it with his um, iPad that they use for the SIMS software program for the cemetery. Um, but that won't run it um, because I and I've had a Mac system won't run it. Um, so we tried some of the old laptops we have here, but none of them would do it either. So we've ordered another uh, laptop through Tech 
to get that going. Um, we have a new scanning system we haven't implemented yet because not everybody has been trained on it or has access yet, but we'll be able to do uh, scanning of large amounts of checks. So those get deposited automatically into our account. Um, but we had no place to set up a separate system so that all staff had access to be able to do it. So we ordered a inexpensive, very basic HP laptop uh, through Amazon. We'll get that set up once everybody's trained and we'll be able to do that. That will be a help. Um, Jason and Andrea from Northeast Bank did come in uh, for those of us who were here and did some training for that and started getting the uh, system set up. We've also sent out the old tax maps with the updates that Rob has done off so that we get the new larger prints made. So we're waiting for those um, to come back. And have we come up with a written policy for verifying any requests for changing payroll? Because of what we had going, we should have a written policy. Um, I know Lisa. I know Lisa uh, had basically uh, let department heads know that no changes would be made unless they came in person. Okay, but can can we get a written policy yes. so it's actually in writing? Yes. Yeah, we need to do that. We need to do a board policy and possibly something too that we discussed. Fortunately, it's only a thousand dollars, right? Because the insurance is going to pay a balance. We already received. Huh? The, we already received the insurance. We did already. Yeah. Good. 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 They were pretty quick. And just as an aside, if check your own homeowner policies. You can get identity theft protection on your homeowner policy cheap. And if you don't have it anywhere else, call your agent. I have a friend who just had like $40,000 scam and has to have the coverage with the coverage. She now has the coverage. So just check your own because it's really inexpensive to be added to a homeowner policy. That's, that's a very good point. <laughs> If you have it someplace else, you know, like lock or some of those, you don't need to pay again. But if you don't, okay. Anything else anyone have? I move we adjourn at 9 11. I'll second that. Yeah. All in favor? Melody? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dan? Carol? Fantastic. We're having a meeting Wednesday. Next Wednesday.